and is only suitable for people aged 18 or over will almost certainly have an adult theme and might well contain scenes or violence which are quite graphic. It may also contain explicit language, including sexual swear words. Thanks for listening. Uh, but here's what his revelation comes to him. He's kind of got all this stuff, like, uh, touching, wiping, mourning of the animals. Not wiping, whipping. whipping. Yeah. <laughs> also, yeah, not torture. Touch, also not touching. I am, I am <laughs> dyslexic. I, I hope I'm not having like, a stroke. Do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! And an atheist almost always becomes supporters of eugenics and abortion. A swine is hungry for nuts. Jesus hates him too. Satan is real. Being a Satanist is an open declaration of revolt against counterproductive received wisdom and mindless rogue traditions. Decapitate her head off. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. Obama! Welcome to the Godless Revolution. Today is Tuesday, January 5th, 2016. This is episode 87. 2016, holy fuck, nothing, it's already a crazy year. You know, I, <laughs> I almost left it 2015 on accident. Yeah, and yeah. And had to remind myself, no, the year changed, dummy. <laughs> you gotta change yeah. it on a document, too. I had to sign a bunch of paperwork on January, like, one at work, and I'm like, <gasps> six? Yeah. Uh, like, mentally go... Today is the first day of the year. I'm going to write five and all this shit. Mm. Yeah, like December 31st was, you know, thus ends the six-month period that I write the year correct. <laughs> right. And then, Pretty much. And then tomorrow will begin the six-month period that I write it incorrect. Lee. It, yes. It's an adverb. Incorrectly. <laughs> I'm yeah. a dick. No, it's good. I like, I like grammar Nazis because then I don't sound like a moron for longer than I should sound like a moron. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I like when people yeah. correct when I say something wrong, yeah. because, or incorrectly. I, I just don't <laughs> like when people, you get into, like, a heated <laughs> argument, and they correct you in the middle of it. It's like, fuck you! I love that. <laughs> I love doing that, because people go, fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I meant! <laughs> I just, I'm getting yeah, passionate but... right now! <laughs> just trying to clarify some yeah. things here. <laughs> Is English your first language? Uh. <laughs> no, I ask I ask people that fairly frequently because I want to be sure that if I, you know, point out somewhere where they've said something incorrectly, that it's not that I'm being a huge dick. Like, this person knows, you know, more than one language. Right. And I'm correcting them on a minor bit of grammar where... Yeah, you know, yeah, if, yeah. if English is their second language, that's not that big a deal. Yeah. But sure, sure. If they've if they've grown up speaking English their entire life, what if you grew up speaking it barely? I mean, I, sp I well, speak it, but I speak. It. <laughs> <laughs> I grew I up. I grew up rather speakingly. I speak of English. it good. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, I speak there it is, understandedly. There is also Google. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the yeah the highlighters and the Facebook correction and stuff, but uh, yeah, just yeah. when when I when I run into somebody who, I mean, there there are times when it's a real question. Like I want to be sure. Okay, is English your second language? Because you've said this and this and this. That's such a fucking great question too. <laughs> and I because and I, you can sometimes you can, especially on Facebook no, is a valid question there's though. There's no easy way to ask somebody that without no, them being but, pissed off. Yeah, if, I think if it's it awesome. is their first language, like. I, I've pissed off so many people, and I'm like, and I'll I'll even preface it and say, look, I'm not trying to be a dick here, but I'm honestly curious. <laughs> is English that. your first language? And that almost makes it sound more dickish. I know dickish. it's so condescending. I love that. <laughs> but if you're that's amazing. If you're in a conversation on Facebook shit. with yeah, yeah, that's that's bright. I just got lightning eyes. <laughs> yeah, but because then then you could do that if somebody's pissing you off and they're just so fucking stupid, you can you can put that on there. And then it doesn't matter what they say. You can be like, whoa, 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 buddy. Just relax. I'm just trying to make sure because I've run into this problem before. You know? <laughs> I know. Like you can see still. It. See, and, and, like, that, and that makes it even more dickish. And, and I know. A lot of the time awesome. I'm not trying. Like, I'm trying to honestly have a dialogue. Maybe you should also include in there, no I don't what know happens. what country you're from if you're in the United States, <laughs> but is this your first language? <laughs> yeah, better. Well, then that oh, makes God. it sound like. Clearly, you don't know anything about the United States, and <laughs> yeah. you speak the and you speak the native language terribly. So, <laughs> okay, pause, pause, pause. Hold on. Before this debate goes any further, I just want to make sure. Do you English? Because <laughs> <laughs> like, do, do you, you even, even English, English bro? bro? 
<laughs> yeah, I, I mean, there's, there, like I said, there's no, way, there's no easy way to ask yeah, somebody no. that question without sounding yeah. like a complete dick. I know. I kind of like that. I, I've had a couple people rage quit the Atheist of Utah group because oh, we'll, yeah. we'll be having this conversation back and forth, and their language just like slowly devolves into grunts and <laughs> into grunts and whistles and slaps on their yeah, chest, yeah, and yeah. it's like, wait, wait, wait. Before we go any further, I just you want to make sure. You must be a Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you were going <laughs> to? I just want to make sure, like, uh, is English kidding. your first language? Because, you know, if it's not, I totally respect that you're speaking it as well as you are. <laughs> that, that's that's I mean, so you, awesome. You sound like there's no dick. way there's, around no, it. There's, no, there's no, there's no. not. I mean, you can't get around <laughs> it's saying totally, something like that totally without sounding like a dick. Yeah. And and most of the time, awesome. there are times when I mean it to be condescending. Most of the time, sure. I don't. It's it's I I'm honestly curious. I, I've seen you post that before. Only part time are you trying to be a dick? It's it's probably seventy thirty, <laughs> seventy not being a dick, thirty yeah. being a dick. It's a it's a good blend. Yeah, yeah. It depends on my mood, and how much of a dumbass I think the person is to begin with. <laughs> right. How weak their arguments are. Anyway. I, uh, I, I think it's your fault that I've been getting into more and debating with people on the fucking Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes, like over the weekend, I was gonna say I was gonna say sometimes I just I don't know I get I get bored with it. Yeah. Like it seems like more and more it's like this is just I'm rehashing the same arguments with the same yeah. type of person over and over and over again, and it gets a little boring. And so I'll just kind of not post anything or comment for a few days, and then I'll get back and I, I've just gotten the habit of seeing burned out every now and then post oh, yeah. something just completely ignorant. And it's like that is not right whatsoever. I'm like I'll even go research to make sure that I know what you're saying is not right before I even comment back to you. Yeah. So that way I know I'm coming from the right side of the argument, and they'll just keep going. Well, no, no, no. It's like ah, you fucking people. You have a Google yeah. machine at your fingertips. You can research it and look it up your fucking self. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, the other thing that I'll do sometimes is just <sighs> ask them questions like, yeah. "Is there anything yeah. that would ever change your mind about this?" Because if not, then it's me or we having time. a conversation yeah, with useless. you is completely pointless. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to waste my time or yours having the same rehashed conversation that I've had hundreds of times before with people much smarter than you, especially if it's not going to change your mind and there's nothing that could change your mind. Right, right. Like, it's 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 completely pointless. I might as well just go and smack the head of my penis with a hammer, you know, for, yeah. for, all, of the, for <laughs> all of the productivity that will come of this conversation. Yeah, the, the one that got me going today was where some guy said on Facebook uh, on a news article saying, well, Obama obviously needs to go back and learn the Constitution. <laughs> and I'm like, are you fucking stupid? <laughs> the guy who taught it? The guy who was yeah. a constitutional lawyer. I'm like, nothing he has done is outside the Constitution. Yeah, and he starts and, going, he's making new laws. I'm like, you dipshit, it's not a fucking new law. And that and that backwoods redneck o Oklahoma dumbass is going to be the one that knows the Constitution better than fucking Harvard graduate president of the United States, yeah. uh, well, Obama. And then when I point out that there's no new laws inside the stuff that he signed today, he deflects on the question. Throws out red herrings. Well, that's when he started doing the whole thing. Well, well, what about the you know all this other bullshit? See it's where like, the goalpost uh, was a moment ago. I'm gonna yeah. just move, move that, yeah. move it way <laughs> back move here, there. okay? Because I just read everything you sent me, and none of that is a new law. In which I said he passed a new law today, so I obviously was wrong. So I'm gonna deflect from that question yeah. and, and ponder something else. Yeah, that. Yeah, see, though people like that, I'd say, is English your first language? <laughs> 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 and I would be totally condescending. Well, the thing is, is the guy was actually using commas and, <laughs> and periods and wasn't shorthanding stuff in there and was capitalizing letters that were supposed to be capitalized. Mm -hmm. So he actually did have quite good grammar. I mean, mine usually sucks. So when I get into like a debate with someone, I'm like, I make sure that I have my sentences <laughs> made up into correct sentences. There, there, was, uh, <clears throat> there was a time when I had several friends on Facebook who would use lol speak. Oh, and I'm nice. like, come on. You're not on a fucking flip phone with T9 texting on it right now. You're yeah. sitting at a goddamn computer. Yeah. You can spell shit out, okay? Yeah. I hate when people do that. T9. Because <laughs> I, uh, I still don't know what nice. some of those abbreviations mean. Yeah. Yeah, when I see people use PPL for people, oh, or they'll yeah, yeah, use yeah. peeps, just, come on, man. Type. Yeah, Greg Clark. <laughs> fucking peeps. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I think he does that for I know I, I'm effect, sure he does. But, yeah. Yeah. Ever, when I see, ever the smartest. Yeah, when I see other people use it like 
and they're being they're trying to have a serious conversation. It's like I can't take you seriously. Yeah, no. I will say, bro, though. Like I should have said to that guy, "Do you even constitution, bro?" <laughs> <laughs> nice. So we finished out. This is our first show of the new year. <laughs> Nothing gives yeah. you credibility yeah. like bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you even even bro? <laughs> yeah. Um. But so last week was our last show of the last year. This is yeah. our first show of the new year. We yeah. went through some predictions from some of the crazy religious people uh, during our last show that that they completely failed at, even though these were, you know, divine, divinely inspired words directly from God in the right. case of some yeah. of them. Many Jim of Baker them. in particular, mm-hmm. who said, God talked to me, said, you know, Jim, like, I'm sure that's how God talks, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. right. We in, need to do in, like the Conan O'Brien casual, thing in casual English. For this, though. You know, Jim, do you even hate the gays, bro? <laughs> do you even homophobe do you bro? even homophobe bro <laughs> perfect you need to have the in the year 2000 conan <laughs> o'brien what's that you don't remember that no the original conan, conan o'brien show him and andy richter would put hats on and go with like a really high-pitched voice and like a song and be like in the year 2000 and then make predictions <laughs> like in the Sounds future vaguely familiar yeah it was i I, I, I loved conan o'brien <laughs> i don't remember that at all you, you could look it up teacher. on the youtube look it up yeah nah but <laughs> i was gonna say well i probably won't but <laughs> that went nowhere <laughs> no I guess, I guess no one else here was a, an original conan o'brien not fan. a huge conan fan I, I think he's cool i just don't well, conan know. like came out when i was a teenager so he's gay well, came out on TV. Oh. He's an atheist? <laughs> he probably is. I don't know. <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. I, I got one prediction I could do. Okay, well, yeah, I, w- I wanted to say, so <laughs> So we talked about... The gun. Yeah. We, we <laughs> talked last year about the predictions that, that failed from those on the yeah. on the Christian right, and I thought, well, maybe we should do some of our own predictions that then at the end of this year we can go back and review and see what ones we got correct. Which ones? Well, I, I think this one could Which, come. <laughs> Whichly. This, this, Which, this, this will happen. Whichly ones we corrected mostly. <laughs> Within the next few Ish, months, during this. this prediction will come true. What? Mm. Ben Carson will have to drop out of the presidential election, mm, and he yep. will blame it all on liberal media. That's a, that's a solid prediction. That second part makes it actually interesting. The first part that he's going to drop out is, is no a given, brainer, yeah. but that he'll blame it on liberal media mm. for him not getting it. Interesting. Yeah, all well, most all of them. It's, yeah, most of them. Do but he's when they he's been the one that yeah. lately he's been going after more often, saying, "Well, it's the liberal media that's doing it to me. It's the liberal. It's the media. liberal media reporting on the things that I've said that were completely <laughs> fucking lies." <laughs> um, what other predictions? Does I I, I want to say it? Doth thou have? This is tough, <sighs> Sir Duffy of the Octon. I want to say that come November of 2016, Bernie Bernie Sanders will have our election. One for our next president. You'll be our president elect. Yeah, you think Bernie's going to be president? I think, I think I think he has the the great shot at doing it. And I think right now people he's coming more up. He's even some of the media outlets are starting to say Bernie's got a chance. A little more. He's sneaking in more. And I think he's gonna he's gonna have a good shot. Yeah, I wanted to look at the Iowa and, uh, Iowa and New Hampshire polls to see how that's all shaking out. Well, I know Hampshire, lately in New Hampshire, he's been ahead in New Hampshire. Yeah, that's for a state, but... a, a while. Yeah, I don't New, know. If, New I Hampshire, don't... I think he was leading when I looked at it last, and Iowa, he was gaining ground. I think he was within five points. He's been gaining a lot of ground. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's getting his message out, and more people are listening to him. I think. I think one thing I'd be willing to say, but this is going to be deep into next year. Maybe this time next year. Well, this time next year will be 2017. Right. <laughs> and it'll be just one year. That's not really... Yeah. We're, we're this on... Would be, that'd be one well, year and five deep days. deep into next year would be like no, no, June, no. July, August, later than that. Deep into 2016. The very tail end of 2016. So, I'm like, okay, so what I can say is December we're 31st. in 2016 right now. Man. Yes, I know. <laughs> Jesus fucking you Christ. You said deep into next year. Deep into this year. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> is Nazi English your grammars. first language? I could say you fucking <laughs> fuckly. Fuckly. Uh, so I could say that, you know, by April we will have had at least one one more mass shooting. That's <laughs> that's a given. Okay, yeah. right. Yeah. So what I'm saying is by the very end of twenty sixteen, because it's gonna take that much, I think this is gonna be my bold bolder prediction. 
would be that I think people will, people across the board will begin to begin to look back on Obama's presidency as a major success. Ah, uh, by the I, end of by the end of this year. Well, he'll still be in office by the end. I think it's going to take longer than that. Well, honestly, I'd give it five years before people say I look at it. I look at it as a major success. I know. But, I do. Okay, so the wor- for, the wording was particular there that that people will begin to start looking at it as a major ma- because right now it's so heavily criticized. I mean, every in the move, general populace, even those on the right, and well, I mean, maybe not, maybe not the far right dumb fucks that are deep in the as south. far as what will go down in the history books. As, y- yeah, I, th- as, I, his, I as his presidency. I think the legacy of Obama will begin to start to make the shift towards what it what it will eventually be. Uh, for some Only reason, just to begin that. I don't think I, I think I, you're right about the five year thing. Well, yes, that's course. what I was gonna say. I don't think it'll start to shift until he's, I, he's after he's even out of office. I'm trying to come up with something bold. Jesus, we yeah. didn't pick apart your Bernie <laughs> shit. Jesus Christ. <laughs> HRC <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I I hope Bernie wins. I just I don't know. Mass shootings. So any other <laughs> predictions? I'd have to think about it for a minute. Um, fuck. I so I'll go on the record and say my predictions are that the Republican Party will have a contested primary. They won't have a clear-cut winner. Um, and and during their convention, that Rubio. That's. Will emerge, and I, I mentioned oh, yeah. this That's a couple. I, I mentioned this a, a couple weeks ago during the show when we were going through what a contested, y- yeah, what a yeah. contested primary is and everything. That I think Rubio will end up as the eventual Republican nominee. Yeah, that's really bold that's, of you. That's who I was trying to think in my head. I'm like, who do I think would be the Republican? And I was thinking Rubio in my it's, head a little it's bit. Rubio. Yeah, yeah. I think he'll emerge as the as the Republican nominee during a contested convention. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, there won't be a clear winner going that, into the convention. That, that's a little bolder. Yeah. 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 I don't think there will be a clear winner going into the, into the convention and that Rubio will emerge as the Republican Party's nominee. Um, hmm. And, you know, I, I'm i going to go out and say I think Bernie will end up being president. Wow. Any, any predictions on any foreign wars? Any foreign wars? Oh, God. I don't want to. Um... I think Canada's going to attack Australia. That's been <laughs> pending for they've years. Been, I mean, <laughs> they've had that rivalry and hatred brewing. Canada's been calling them <laughs> centuries forever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any wars? Ah, you fucking moose knuckle. No, that's Boston. What am I doing? I can't do Australian. I, I, I want to say I hope we don't put ground troops on the ground in Iraq again. Yeah. To the large numbers. But I can almost see it happening. Yeah, I can I can see it happening, but I think the Arizona Cardinals are gonna be the NFC champs of this season. Oh yeah? I think they're all You guys are not very excited there. about the <laughs> <laughs> Well the Packers are the NFC, so Well they didn't get it though. Well how did how did playoffs. New England lose to fucking Miami? Dude, they are they are limping and hobbling into the playoffs, man. I saw that and I was like, "Wait, what?" Well, so they they lost to Denver first. That was their first loss, week eleven. Then they turned right around, and lost to the Eagles. Uh huh. Then they lost to the Jets and then the Dolphins. Huh. But Tom Brady, Tom Brady, over the last three years is zero and three in Miami. So that's a thing. But the rest of it, I mean, Julian, they were ten and zero. Julian Edelman got hurt, and over the next seven games, they went three and four. Without him, mm. Mm. Brady threw twenty-four touchdowns, four interceptions with Edelman. Threw sixteen touchdowns, nine interceptions without him. Yeah, I just wanted to make fun of your team for losing to Miami. Oh, it really? Oh, is. okay. <laughs> what about? <laughs> I figured you'd have some numbers and you'd talk well, about. I thought the... you were probing me. I that you know no, that I. Yeah. I was prepared to say I think the Raiders look really, really good. I think they're in great shape for next year. But uh, fuck you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they anyway. they've done better this year than they have for a while. Yeah, they and... that that Derek Carr to Amari Cooper. I've been saying it for weeks. I think now, but I'm liking it. They got I a think, nice I little think the, system going. The there. only one that's probably better is Roethlisberger to Antonio Brown. But who's yeah. going to have more than 136 catches for 1,800 yards? 
that's with Roethlisberger missing four games. Well, he's yeah, fat. I mean, imagine he uh, Antonio Brown would have been easily over two thousand yards. That's insane. Hmm. Anyway, so yeah. let's see. <laughs> Any other predictions? I mean, there, there's the usual stuff, right? We're we're going to have the world's going to end. Jews, I mean, gays caused it. <laughs> well, no. Jew gays. I, I almost said Jews. The caused gay it, Jew that, Muslim that, atheist. That's Donald Trump if he gets into office. Uh, no. So, so there's there's the usual things that we just know will happen. There will be somebody in the religious right, multiple people actually, who will be exposed as hypocrites and cretins. Oh sure. For doing something completely immoral, or something that they have been preaching against for a very long time. There could also be some Republicans going to federal prison if the news that has been coming out lately is true. Which Republicans are those, and for what? Uh, I can't remember their names right off the bat, but they're to which president? And to which prison? Federal. Pound me in the ass prison. Which one? Well, probably like Leavenworth. Who are the judges going to be? Oh, I don't know, but (laughs) they the they have found records of them talking with. Uh, foreign countries to try to get paid off so they won't oh, vote for the Iran deal. Tom Cotton. Yeah. It hadn't been for Tom Cotton. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of the guys. Not, not, uh, who, what, which, uh, dignitary were they talking? The other leader, another leader they're talking to, and everybody's like, well, what are you going to pay us to vote your way? Are you talking about Netanyahu? Yeah, Netanyahu. They're yeah. having talked to Netanyahu because he didn't. He wanted something else to happen. The Republicans are like, okay, well, if you pay us right, we'll fucking vote your way. Yeah, Tom Cotton, I think, is the one that's. Really, been taking heat for that. So but he's not the only one, as far no. as. I, but I, I don't know that that's verified either. I've not heard that. Well, apparently it was our own government that was doing the spying and found it out. Hmm. Done found it out. Done found it out that they're doing some some shenanigans. Yeah, fuck Israel. Huh. I would like to say that Donald Trump will have to file for bankruptcy. <laughs> after a failed yeah, yeah not, a failed, not as president <laughs> no after a failed oh, campaign and him spending his own money on it and then after people hearing what he truly has to say about subjects that are socially you know type things the wealthier liberals that n- normally would you know go to his establishments or pay him to do things be like you know what dude we don't like your image anymore so we're not going to hire you to do your tv show we're not going to hire yeah. you for this and this and this and this and he's slowly going to lose ground and stop having the income he wants i know brandon oh. Go ahead. Oh, I just that oh, was oh. that was that was the sum total of my commentary <laughs> on that. I know Brandon Brandon comes back and it, like sometimes he'll tell me that he's got friends at school that are quote Trump supporters, which I think probably in most cases means that their parents, their are, parents Trump are Trump supporters. Trump supporters yeah. And you know, so I've probed him a little bit, like you know, because he he thinks it's fucking ridiculous. And uh, so I ask him why do they support Trump? You know, because they're racists and don't want to have to admit that or what you know so he's come back and he's like well because they think that with the national debt and everything that you know running it like a business and everything I'm like, he's run every fucking business into the ground <laughs> what's he gonna do run the country in the ground and take off to china the only way to run so over there you don't know well that's yeah, how he became exactly. successful yeah, exactly. was shipping it all to china like yeah but that's that's the only argument outside i'm a fucking closet racist well we need it run like a but no he's a terrible businessman yeah, he he's didn't even salesman. make any of his money. He's a good salesman. He's not a good businessman. Is he? I, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. He's a fucking narcissist. Well, he sold his name. Everything's got his name on. That's why, I like, people be like, "Well, I'm going to stop supporting Trump. I'll stop buying his clothes. I won't shop at any of his places." Yeah, all his made uh, in China clothes. Well, no, India. Or was it India or Indonesia? It's China. Or his clothes? Oh, well, his, his clothes. His, I thought were his Indonesia make America or great. Make America great uh, again. Hats are made in China. Were they? Because yeah. mm-hmm. someone had a bunch of his ties and like his suit things, and I thought, think when they looked at the tag, it said, "Oh, made in Indonesia, making American great." Yeah, <laughs> it was on uh, one of the late night shows where he did that to him. No, <laughs> yeah, he's a fucking asshole. I don't like Donald Trump at all. I, I'm, I'm so disheartened whenever I see somebody who I think otherwise has you know somewhat of a brain in their head. Yeah. Tell me that they're a Trump supporter. I'm like, why? Oh, fuck. Yeah. I had no idea that you were such an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> like, like either you're an asshole or you're stupid or you're a stupid yeah. asshole. Those right. are the right. only the only three things that would m- lead to you being a Trump yeah. supporter. Right. Probably the stupid asshole part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a Bernie Sanders sticker coming in the mail here soon. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering which will get more looks now. The Atheist dinosaur or the Darwin fish or the Trump sticker on the back. Trump? I'm thinking about I mean, I mean, Trump, Bernie. I mean Bernie. Like, wait, wait, it's wait, wait. It's going to be the Trump people doing it to me. 
I'm gonna. I'm, I'm thinking. About, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! What are we talking about? <laughs> They'll be looking at like, oh, how dare you elect a socialist? I, th- I think. <laughs> I think a Trump sticker on the back of a Hummer would make much, much more sense. It would make fan. sense. You got to have a Bernie sticker on the back of a Ford Focus. True, but I got a Hummer. <laughs> I don't have a Ford Focus. Yeah, that's but what's going to get you the looks. I'm going to put the Bernie sticker right on that spare tire, right over the Hummer logo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's it's the most visible. Right. Let's there. move into God, some, poli- no some political We've news. Long intro. I got to pee already. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Go ahead and get we'll, started. We'll take a little break here, and when we come back, we'll be talking about Donald Trump and his spokespeople, uh, oh, spokes spokeswoman, which is woo. This chick is cray cray. I'm Dustin. And I'm Wesley. We host the Atheist Nomads podcast. We're godless geeks who take a skeptical look at politics, religion, science, technology, and history. We also interview leaders in the atheist, skeptic, and humanist community. Check us out at atheistnomads.com. That's atheistnomads.com. All right, so we were talking about Donald Trump a little bit before the break, uh, and I, I hinted at what his spokespeople are doing because at, watching Donald Trump on stage, I always, I always figure, you know, what are his handlers and the people in the, ba- in the background saying about mm-hmm. the things that he says and does? Like, are they all right. shitting their pants? Like, oh god, he's doing it again. He's ruining the campaign. We're gonna be fucked. You know what? What goes through their mind? Right. And I saw this. I saw this post out on Alternate today. Uh, this is a story titled "The Twelve Craziest Things About Trump's Spokeswoman Katrina Pearson." Is she wearing a bullet necklace? Oh, that's in the story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so look at this. Yeah, that's. Yeah, we know you can't see her, but she looks ghastly. <laughs> well, she looks like she would slit your throat in, during a one night stand. It's it's That's a all fuck, you'd get. She's a video ca- game villain. Yeah. For sure. Oh, that yeah. good call, yeah. So the story says, uh, this comes from Alternate, when Trump named Texas Tea Party or Katrina Pearson his national spokesperson in November, it was a match made in Helven. Uh, <laughs> in nice. just two months on the job, Pearson, 39, has racked up as racked up nearly as many offensive statements as her unfiltered boss. The two share a love of tweeting and a contempt for all things they deem, quote, politically correct, end quote, meaning taste or sensitivity. Quote, so what? They're Muslim, she said when asked about Trump's proposal to ban Muslims from the country. Oh, Jesus. Pearson's most recent act of provocation was wearing a necklace of bullets for a CNN interview to show her love and support for the NRA. When she was criticized, she said she'd wear a necklace of fetuses next time to bring, <laughs> quote, awareness to 50 million aborted people that will never get to be on Twitter. Wow. End quote. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, that's. Wow. Wow. That's, uh, that's amazing. But she did not stop there, adding, quote, the liberals freaking out about my accessories are sexist. They only yeah. approve of women in pantsuits and jackets. Oh, and tampon earrings, end quote. What? Uh, that last uh, bit was a reference to MSNBC host Melissa Harris Perry's unusual accessories in a July 2013 broadcast. Uh, no, that bullet necklace makes you look like someone that just came out of Mogadishu and is ready to <laughs> kick some ass. Uh, Pearson and her boss share something else, apart from their mutual hatred of immigrants, a complete lack of concern about consistency or avoiding hypocrisy. Here are some fun, lesser known, not entirely consistent facts from Pearson's bio. Now there's 12. This is number one. Pearson was born to a 15-year-old mother in Kansas and raised with the help of welfare, Hmm. the sort of government program she now vehemently opposes. Like her mother, she had a baby at a young age and sometimes availed herself of government government assistance, although she repudiates her mother's, quote, redistribution of wealth and, quote, attitudes. Uh, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's only good if you get it, not everybody else. Yeah. (laughs) Number two, she has a 1997 arrest for shoplifting when she was 20. She was accused of stealing $168 worth of clothing from a J.C. Penney. She has since woven this episode into her story of pulling herself up by her own stolen bootstraps. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, she has said she got active in politics as a result of 9-11. I thought, quote, these things don't happen in our country, so what's going on? <laughs> well, they, uh, well, it was the second time that tower was attacked. Uh-huh. <laughs> so obviously they do happen. Number four, she voted for Barack Obama. <gasps> oh, was a good idea. 
in 2008 because she thought, quote, it was pretty awesome for a country that Barack Obama was a black guy running for that office, end quote. Pearson's biological mother was white and her father was black. But she soon became disenchanted with Obama when she realized, quote, everything that he stood for was in complete opposition to what I felt, end quote. What set her off was Obama's refusal to wear an American flag lapel pin. That's what set her off. Oh, geez. She also disliked his whole socialized medicine thing <laughs> i don't i don't <laughs> so the so the flag pin that was really yeah. that was really the kicker but i also don't like this other thing that was uh not but very but well executed the, the, did we talk about the flag lapel pin because that was the kicker that was the like, thing that really set me geez. the fuck off uh number five she did not turn toward the republican party because she did not much like john mccain mm-hmm. but she did kind of like sarah palin oh, god who seemed quote more normal End quote to her. Wow. Jesus Christ. She has said that when she went to her first Tea Party meeting, she felt like she found, quote, her people. End Racist. quote. She especially liked their stance against government spending on social programs. You know, the things that helped programs her live. that helped her mother and uh-huh. helped, that, that, that helped fed her, her live her life yeah. until yep. she was self sufficient. Yeah. Number six, the avid anti government program Tea Party received unemployment benefits while working for Ted Cruz's 2012 <laughs> Senate campaign. So more of those government those same aid social pro- programs yeah, that she yeah. vehemently opposes. Opposes. Yeah. <laughs> Except when she needs them. Yeah. Right. It's not okay well, it's, for it's anyone different else. Different then. Yeah. She's in a different circumstance. Well, like, she knows that she's on the right track. She's yeah. going to fix her shit. Yeah. She's going to get that feces cohesive. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven. Last year, she mounted a primary challenge against Texas Rep. Pete Sessions. She was trounced. Former boss Ted Cruz's support was tepid, but his father, right-wing evangelical preacher Rafael Cruz, backed her. Quote, I love him, Pearson said at the time. He is the same as Ted to me. Which is scary. Yeah. She loves Ted Cruz and, yeah. Uh, Number eight. After Pearson lost the primary, she took a job as a spokesperson for the Tea Party Leadership Fund, which political report Politico reports, quote, has been described in media reports as a scam pack for tactics that include spending unusually high percentages of its funding on overhead. Mm -hmm. We all have to pay the bills, but for Katrina, there is no principle that she isn't willing to abandon for the right price, complained Matt (laughs) McCowlick, sure, (laughs) an unaligned Republican consultant from Texas. This is a Republican saying she just takes money. Mm hmm. She does whatever is expedient for her own... Back pocket. Yeah, for her own wants at the time. Number nine, she bailed on Ted Cruz when she became smitten with Trump's anti-immigration message. Hmm. She met Trump face-to-face at several conservative events, such as Rep. Steve King's Iowa Freedom Summit in Des Moines and later at CPAC. She shares his views on Islam, writing on Facebook, quote, Islam preys on the weak and uses political correctness as cover. Two things that Americans won't be concerned with when at real Donald Trump is in the White House, end quote. Mm. Yeah, Islam does prey on the weak, but yeah. that's so every religion. So does Christianity. Christianity. Yeah. Uh, one area where she might be more extreme than her boss is nuclear weapons. Quote, what good does it do to have, to have a good nuclear triad if you're afraid to use it? Jesus Christ. She's end never. quote. She remarked after Donald Trump botched a debate question about nuclear armaments. She, Number 10. She needs to read about mutual destruction. Yeah, she mutually assured read. destruction. Yeah. She needs to read. Uh, number 10. Another reason she decided to go to work for Trump, who is less conservative than she generally prefers her polish- politicians Jesus to be, Christ. is that she was a little starstruck. Quote, when Donald says, I think you're great, I really want you to work for me, I don't think <laughs> any sane person would say no to that. End quote, she told Politico. Uh, I think I, most sane people. Yeah. I think I think the definition of sanity would be to say no to that. If you can't see through his superficial charm, then you're a fucking moron. Yeah. If Donald Trump ever comes to me and goes, I think you're great. I love what you're doing right now. I'd be like, well, fuck, I'm doing something wrong. Thanks and go fuck yourself. Fuck I'd be like, what am I doing wrong right <laughs> what now? What the fuck does he like about me? <laughs> Jesus. What is it about me that I need to change immediately? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, number 11, she shares Trump's entrepreneurial bent and plans to launch her own clothing line, uh, good for although you. she apparently has not pitched her business to Ivanka Trump, who heads her own fashion line. In fact, Pearson thinks the Donald's brill- branding brilliance is just what the world needs, okay. telling the Dallas Morning News, quote, Mr. Trump is definitely someone that has an international economic appeal. 
He's built a billion-dollar empire. He's grown businesses. He's had successes and failures. He's learned the tricks of the trade. He's a great negotiator. <laughs> he's known for building brands, and that's what the country needs right now. End quote. No word on whether Pearson's clothing line would also would also <laughs> access. I'm sure they forgot the word include here. Would also include accessories like bullet and fetus necklaces, together oh, in God. one necklace, ideally. I, I wonder Whoa. if her clothing line would be called Five Finger Discount. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. And lastly, number 12, she views Trump as a stepping stone, a transitional figure to an even more conservative president. Because that's going to happen. Yeah. Maybe Ted Cruz, if he'll have her back. She told Politico, quote, Cruz would be a good president, but I think right now with all the hyper-partisanship in the country, I think Trump would be the better person to transition out of Obama, she oh, said. Wow. It would be a softer transition for some on the left. It would be a harder transition for some on the right. I, I honestly give the Tea Party one to two more elections before it's gone. They've already made themselves completely yeah. irrelevant. I mean, well, they're irrelevant, but they're still like a group. Yeah. Are you going to read number thirteen? There was only twelve. That Katrina Pearson was raised on Fury Road. <laughs> 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 no, actually, I think she could have been in L.A. when Snake was trying to what escape. Boys? <laughs> God damn. Yeah, she's so she's a Out nutter. Out of her fucking mind insane. Yeah. Uh, moving on. We've got Pat Robertson being dismissive about child abuse. This comes to us from Right Wing Watch. Today on the 700 Club, a viewer named Jonathan told host Pat Robertson that, quote, my mother sexually assaulted me when I was younger. End quote, and wanted to know whether he should call the police and have my mother charged now that I can speak up, or whether he should turn the other cheek. The televangelist advised Jonathan not to call the police and expressed disbelief that a mother would abuse her son. Oh, yeah, because oh, in Jesus. Pat's world, that never happens. Yeah. Quote, Jonathan, I think the thing to do is to let that thing rest, he said. Good grief, your mother assaulted you? It's hard to believe. It's so rare, but in any event, she's your mother. I mean, you got to love her. I pray that she might find the Lord and God will forgive her for for that, and you should forgive her too. But you're not. But you're going to charge her and ask for her to be put in jail now that you're in your late twenties? Of course not. Yeah, this is this is coming from the same guy who said that uh, when a caller when a caller called in and uh, had an issue with her son listening to Avenge Sevenfold that. If it if it was my son, God, he's only he's eleven year old twerp, you know. You beat him, you beat him up, basically is what yeah. he said. <laughs> and and you know, he's like, well, I know I know she's a mother, you know, and maybe there's not a, a father around the house. And then the, his ho his lady that reads all the stuff is like, well, she did say us. And he's like, well, then every then it, God, if he was my son, it would be Big Daddy's home, and I'd make sure that twerp <laughs> knew his place. You know, it's like so. P rubs is all about. Parental Beating. Yeah. ass whoopings. Yeah. Yeah. Parental abuse. That's the way yeah. that you. Yeah. That's how you should. Read yeah. And children. if they do abuse you, then you just shut the fuck up. You never report it, which is the biggest problem with abuse yeah. in the first place. And uh -huh. don't even think about sending your mom to face any consequences for her, her illegal activities. Let's hear it right out of the animated mummy's mouth the fucking ah. devil's mouth this one is from jonathan pat who says god, die already, i got dude. involved with hookers the day i turned 18 because my mother sexually assaulted <laughs> sexually me when i was younger assaulted him. my father was not at fault for this because he was at work providing for his family during this the isn't abuse. just regular abuse. should i call the police and have my mother charged now that i can speak up or do i turn the other cheek in case you're wondering, my father's now dead, but I never had the courage my to tell him what him. happened to me until I was in my late twenties. Jonathan, I think the thing to do is let that thing rest. I, I could grief. Your mother assaulted you? Mm -hmm. It's it's hard to believe. You know, well, exactly. it happens. Huh? It happens. Yeah. Well, it's so rare, but in any event, you don't fucking she's your know. mother. <laughs> and I mean you've got to love her. Uh, you, no, I you pray don't that you find the Lord, asshole. and then Fuck you. God will forgive her for that, and you should forgive her too. But are you going to charge her and ask for her to be put in jail? Yeah. Now that yeah. you're in your late twenties, of course not. All right. All right. Just don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Just let her get away with it. That's the church's way. You fucking just asshole. Just ignore it. That's fine. It'll, that guy it'll needs, go away. That guy needs to fucking die. Yeah. Uh, moving on. That's some bullshit. We've got Kevin Swanson. 
Mm. You remember him. God. One of our churches is going to take he? a stand against sexual abuse. Jesus <laughs> Christ. He's the one. Kevin Swanson is the one who said that if he was invited to a gay wedding, he would cover himself <laughs> oh, in yeah. sackcloth and ashes and smear smear feces <laughs> all over himself. You don't draw a smiley face on their open pussy wounds. <laughs> you so, don't do it. You don't do that. You don't do that. You don't do that. So he's not the Swanson <laughs> ice cream that. man. No. So he no. doesn't bring around good. No, no this guy not is out of his treatment. fucking oh. gourd insane. Uh, apparently he believes that Hillary Clinton will lead tremendous majorities of American kids to homosexuality. <laughs> I guess just one by one, taking them by the hand, like... Yeah. And being... Suck a dick or lick a pussy. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Why? <laughs> don't, don't get the lines mixed up or they'll all be straight. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's gonna take all the boys and tell them all to suck a dick and tell all the girls to lick pussy. Let's, Jesus <laughs> Christ! This is from SoundCloud, so we'll have to. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I can I'm endure just, sound on this one, but I'm just imagining that's what's that's what's gonna happen. Yeah, he's, or, or he imagines it's I, gonna happen. This guy's so fucking messed up. Who he's knows? loony. Here's a judge in Massachusetts clamped down on a Catholic school. He ruled that they were guilty of discrimination because they rescinded a job offer to a man later discovered to be a homosexual. Evidently, uh-huh. he interviewed for a job as as uh, director of food services That's at Fontbonne Academy, an all girls Catholic school, 2013. Offered the job, he uh, listed a hu- his husband as his emergency contact, and the school rescinded the sure. offer. Well, Judge Douglas Wilkins ruled the academy was guilty of discrimination, yes. despite the school arguing that Barrett's lifestyle was inconsistent with its teaching. Now, this again, a violation of freedom it has on nothing to do with his teaching. Levels. Nope. Okay, you you go back hundreds and hundreds of years and you look at the 800 year legacy of freedom in the western world and tradition. you can read it in my book freedom just released oh, i encourage you to get a copy for all your kids and grandkids we should all just live the same the, the same way yeah. we did hundreds and hundreds yeah. of years ago yeah i mean they, life was they, so much better they than really them. had it right in the 1300s it's fucking ridiculous well for the church that that really was the pinnacle though that was the Where heyday yeah so i guess i mean maybe that's <laughs> Because <laughs> this heritage is something we've got to hang on to over the next 80 no, years. It's not. Got to, got to, got to, if you've got the courage and the faith to do it. No, but do this it. is an attack on freedom on a hundred different levels. Okay. I mean, you're talking about property rights. What? These no. people ought to have the right to hire and fire whoever they will. The property rights. Property? The Wait, basic, uh, basic. Property right? Is he talking about nothing, slavery? What the fuck? That has nothing to do with this property. Is, this is about property rights? They should be able to hire and fire who they want at will? The there, there's it? things called employment laws. Yeah, you you can't just, just discriminate. I mean, th- this guy is just a, such a nut job. Yeah. Maybe we, we we probably shouldn't stop him every second because he's just gonna, the whole thing is going to be nutso. Yeah. Basic freedom. But then, of course, religious freedom. A celebration of homosexuality no. and preparation for the Greek form of education, <laughs> which, as you know, involves whatever's going on in gymnasium. Right. Very, very ugly stuff. OK, what? I don't want to get into a lot know. of the details, but that's the direction. We're going the direction There's a lot of gay of stuff going Harry on in- Potter's mentor. Oh, remember Timmy when that. you would climb the rope in gym class? Yeah. That's the direction oh, we're headed. He just brought up Dumbledore. And, and, you know, obvious. Yeah. It's yeah. incredibly <laughs> obvious. I mean, these, these guys aren't trying to hide anything, ladies and gentlemen, not trying to hide a thing. There's nothing to hide. Idealizing the Greek form of education. This is the direction we're heading. And this is what this judge is doing, Judge Douglas Wilkins, by inviting homosexuals into Christian schools now. What? It's going to be the churches here fairly soon. I, yeah. I, 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 yeah. Hold on. Just and a second. I don't think I, freedom's got. I just want to stop it real quick because this is, I think this is an important point because I think, I think it's almost a tacit admission that the, that the secular left is winning on some level because this guy, this guy's, not a Catholic, no. right? He's an evangelical, yeah, right. And uh-huh. and for decades, it's been a major dispute between Protestants and Catholics all over the world, but especially in places like Ireland and the United States. But now, what we're starting to see is that the Protestants are accepting Catholics as part of their own group. They're saying, "Well, now the judges are because f- he's talking about a Catholic facility. Yeah, now the judges are are allowing the the homosexuals into a Christian facility." Well, wait a minute. <laughs> These are Catholics. You're a Protestant. Since when have you guys been on the same team? Only when they have to team up against the secularists. Uh-huh. So in that sense, there's a tacit admission of, of losing ground, Yep. which I'm happy about. Freedom's got much of a chance in the near future. That's why all we can do right now is write books 
and train our children if we still have the opportunity to give them a biblical world and life view. No. Keep yeah. them out of the public schools so they won't be polytheists and socialists. <laughs> what? Which is exactly what the public schools will tell you they will train your kids to be. They don't train to be, to be polytheists. Anything. Keep them out of those schools. Uh, yeah, we teach Hinduism. And for at least a generation, we can pull off a very slim minority of kids who are trained in a biblical way of thinking. If we can get a shot at this, Trained. He's, freedom he's will have a shot. But for the 2016 elections, army. I'd give Hillary yep. Clinton 80% chance. People are asking me. Republicans, they're very unified. Everybody's coming around one candidate. Everything's just, I mean, it's just going so smooth. Oh, really? really? Republicans? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. It's it's not looking good for the Republicans. <laughs> they're not yeah, even the guy he's talking I'd give Hillary yeah, Clinton like, that serious? 80% chance of getting elected in 2016. Again, friends, I don't know what God's going to do. God could have mercy on this nation. That's why I'm not saying no. A hundred. And who are you to thwart his plans? Right. Why the fuck? If if you honestly believe in a biblical plan, in a biblical Jesus, in a biblical in a biblical biblical Jesus. plan that is outlined by your God, who are you to question anything that happens? Yeah. I mean, either he allowed it to happen or he planned for it to happen. Right. Who yeah. the fuck are you to stand in yeah. the way of any of that? They don't have God's playbook. Just go suck your thumb in a fucking corner and read your goddamn book. Yeah. Be quiet. Yeah, f- true believing Christians should be the most apathetic people on the planet. Yeah, they shouldn't give a they fuck about anything that's going on because down, it's all part of God's plan. Lay down in a dark room. God and wouldn't let God allow God anything really horrible to happen to them. That's what they say all the time, yeah. right? Or, or if he did, well, it wouldn't be beyond what they could handle. But if he did, he would straighten it out in the end. So what the fuck are you doing praying? Percent chance for Hillary Clinton. But this is the direction we're headed as a nation. There is zero indication of any real repentance going on in this nation. And I've called the nation to repentance in the public forum, and I was severely mocked for it. Of course, yeah. everybody knows. Oh, yeah. you should have been. <laughs> yeah. But, but no, that's not my concern. My concern is not what the media thought about a call to repentance to this nation. And, and I, I looked at sexual sin, not just homosexuality, but I drew in other forms of sin as well. And, like and feces all but here's my question. <laughs> Where across the nation do we even find a little bit of repentance going on in nooks and crannies? I mean, tiny little churches somewhere whole south. where, you know, there's actually, you know, 60 people coming to repentance and, and they're falling on their faces and with humble and contrite hearts before God and worshiping God and repenting of sin. And we begin to see profound changes occurring in tiny little nooks and crannies i would love to see a little no. bit i mean a tiny uh-uh. tiny tiny little bit of repentance going on somewhere across this country and i'm just not seeing it now if you i just don't talked see about it, yeah, seeing tiny, tiny in the nooks bits. and crannies why in the world would god bless the nation repent for what that's yeah. my question okay yeah, so there's, why, there's no reason so why so his idea of a just merciful perfect god is one who says, no, 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 fuck you, get on your goddamn knees, worship me and praise me, and yeah. then maybe I'll think about it. Yep. That's the God he worships, and he wants everyone else to bow down to. Fuck you, Swanson, yeah. and fuck your God. Yeah, which, and, which and who does is he? Make, oh, makes, go ahead. That's, which still doesn't make sense, because if God's all-knowing, he's going to know if you're going to bow down to him or not. So yeah, what of the course. Fuck, what the fuck difference does of it make? Of course. I mean, uh, you know, three three secular atheists in a room right here on this show have the ability to thwart his plans. The great, <laughs> all-powerful being of the... Uh, fuck you, Swanson. <laughs> Mock fuck you <laughs> mercilessly for being a dumbass. And do nothing about it. He's helpless. Completely. And who is he to try to impose his personal beliefs on other people? Yeah. How would he like it if... if you Hindus know, started coming God the forbid and, right. the, those Islamists came over here and instituted or, Sharia law and made Kevin Swanson be a Muslim. Or yeah. the polytheist, as is apparently the big problem. <laughs> Them <laughs> damn polys. <laughs> Wouldn't Hillary Clinton get full reign upon this nation to continue the destruction of upon this nation. Up destroy this nation. the <laughs> social fabric of the nation, the family, of course. So that, of course, there will be 75% of kids born outside of wedlock to single mothers what? by the year 2030. If you get in power, and that's So to happen. be sure yeah. that 
tremendous majorities of American kids American are, are taken tremendous. down the track towards homosexuality, towards the destruction of sexuality uh, with pornography habits, uh, illegitimate <laughs> divorce, <laughs> oh, the shack up rates uh, being 30 shack times what they were in 1970 and so forth. Of <laughs> course, that's the direction the nation is heading right now. Why? Because there is so little repentance and so few calls for repentance. Uh, up, up on the part of the pastors in the local churches across this country. I doubt that. I'm a, I'm a little confused here. My confusion lies in the fact that Hillary's going to turn most of the kids gay, and the unwed mothers are going to go up. But if they're all gay, how are they going to have kids? <laughs> what? If Hillary's going to turn all the kids gay, uh -huh. how are we going to have more unwed mother or more m mothers having children out of wedlock? Cause if all the kids are gay, how are they having... They don't, you don't have gay babies. Sure you do. Well, artificial insemination. Ad adoption? Yeah, they can adopt gay Yeah, but if, if, they're all, if, everybody, <laughs> if everybody turns gay, who's going to be having these, ki these children to put up for adoption? The Christians. <laughs> yeah. But they're That's married, the so it wouldn't be... The same people who are having them now. Yeah. But, but if they're married, they wouldn't be children out of wedlock. Yeah, who knows? Uh, I don't know. He's <laughs> Bristol Palin. <laughs> now you go me yeah. confused. She's gonna have. She's gonna be. <laughs> she's gonna have that many children where she's gonna count for seventy five percent of the nation's children out of wedlock. <sighs> we haven't talked about her in a long time. We should, We don't really need to talk about her. I yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't like her very much. Neither do I. She's That's probably fucking... why. Oh, uh, what else we got here? Oh, did you guys see that Lumosity was fined $2 million for false advertising? No. You know what Lumosity is, yeah. right? The train your brain and yeah. Yeah. be smarter. Yeah. Do -do 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 -do. We got a bit of science now? A little bit of science. Uh, Lumos Labs, the company that produces the popular brain training program Lumosity yesterday, agreed to pay a $2 million settlement to the Federal Trade Commission for running deceptive advertisements. Lumos had claimed that its online games can help users perform better at work and in school and stave off cognitive dis deficits. I had cognitive deficits on the mind. Yeah. <laughs> Associated with serious diseases such as Alzheimer's, traumatic brain injury, and post-traumatic stress. The $2 well, million dollar settlement will be used to compensate Lumosity consumers who were misled by false advertising, says Michelle Rusk, a spokesperson for the FTC in Washington, D.C., the company will also be required to provide an easy way to cancel auto renewal billing for the service, which includes online and mobile app subscriptions with payments ranging from fourteen ninety five monthly to lifetime memberships for two hundred ninety nine dollars ninety five cents. Before consumers can access the games, a pop up screen will alert them to FTC's order and allow them to avoid future billing. The action is part of a larger crackdown on companies selling products that purportedly enhance memory or provide some other cognitive benefit. Rusk says. For some time now, FTC has been, quote, concerned about some of the claims we're seeing out there, particularly those that, like Lumosity, suggest their games can reduce the effects in, of conditions such as dementia. After evaluating the literature on Lumosity's products and the broader research on the benefits of brain training games, quote, our assessment was that they didn't have adequate science for the claims that they are making, she says. Yeah, like Alzheimer's and dementia are, it's, it's just your brain basically kind of deteriorating yeah it's degenerative yeah it's not nothing that we have anything to fix with right now that's why we, right. we're it's not like you can just train well I mean, your brain yeah, I mean, it's like if, if you're if you're it. experiencing muscle loss it's like well just do some more weightlifting and you'll be fine well that's not how it works but if you have a congenitive like disease that it's actually eating away at your muscles that won't work even that's what i'm that's what i mean and oh, I thought you said if it was just, oh, if you just I, had I just muscle loss. If you have muscle, well, okay, yeah. Like atrophy. If you, you can come back from atrophy, but right, if it's right, an actual well, degenerative disease. So in my mind, yeah. this is one of the things that government is supposed to be around for, right? It's supposed to protect its populace Snake from, from, yeah, from, from charlatans <laughs> like homeopathy. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, right. the, the libertarian view of this would be, well, the government is interfering and these people are just stupid and they deserve to be taken advantage of then. No. Yeah, well, fuck you. Yeah. If, if fuck you for having such a dim view yeah. of everybody else that, that shares this planet with you and, and basically just throwing them under the bus or feeding them to the wolves because you don't think they're as smart as you are while you're watching Stefan Molyneux fucking videos, you fucking stupid ass. <laughs> Not only that, but it's really short-sighted. And it's incredibly egotistic. I mean, they're 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 thinking that 
they're not going to be duped by this, but everyone else who will be, they deserve it. Yeah. Yeah, as if libertarians are never tricked by anything. Yeah, anybody, anybody. They've been tricked by libertarianism. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's you exactly fucking right. fucking morons. I see people post links to fucking <laughs> Stefan Molyneux videos, and I'm like, okay, clearly you're a dumbass. Clearly you listen to one person who, yeah. for some reason, something clicks. Something clicks that he says in their brain, and they're like, this guy's a genius. Right. And then they don't fact check anything else that he yeah. says. Yeah. So th- I, that, that post that Joey uh, so I, I posted that thing about the militia men, uh-huh. whatever. Oh earlier. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then JJ hit posted that little meme, right, with Obama saying, you know, thoughts and prayers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, Joey shared that, and this shithead that was a friend of, you know, was my Facebook friend who really only would appear every now and then, like once every month or two, to shit all over something that I had posted. <laughs> yeah, love those. Like commented. On three or four different posts, you know, replies to people who had commented on Joey's post with a link to some Stefan Molyneux video. Uh huh. I, and it's, it's like a 30 minute video. I watched 20 minutes of it and I was like, 10 minutes in, I spotted so many fallacies and so many yeah. things he was saying wrong. I'm like, clearly the guy who posted this is a fucking moron. Anybody who listens to the shit that Stefan Molyneux says about anything is not a fucking skeptic about anything. Yeah. They just go, this guy makes sense because he has an accent and he's bald and makes videos. I'm going to listen to everything he says. Have, should... have you seen Loose Change? <laughs> if, if I have an accent, will that work for me? Have you seen Zeitgeist, dude? Zeitgeist, bro. Zeitgeist, it's, it's, all, Zeitgeist it's all there. really boss, man. It's all there. I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Anyway, yeah, I, I mean, but but things like this, the, the FTC, the EPA, yeah. these organizations exist because there was a need for them. Yes. They weren't just created out of whole cloth like somebody sitting around going, uh, everything seems to be fine and peachy, but let's just create a new yeah. department for no apparent reason at all to right. go and fuck with people. And make people's jobs harder. Right. Yeah, it's it's like when people complain about uh, labor unions and say, oh, they're corrupt and blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, are they more corrupt than what yes. led to their inception? Yeah, yeah. are they more corrupt than William Randolph Hearst and, and J.P. Morgan and... and- Andrew Carnegie and those guys that yeah. ran those fucking industrial operations, the sweatshops. Yeah, where they where they were, you know, twelve was their average employee age. Yeah, who didn't give a fuck about their employees? Who didn't give them any benefits at all? Worked them no. twelve, sixteen hours. Yeah. Didn't care about their safety. No days off. Not they were enough, just not a living wage. Yeah, they their employees were widgets in and of themselves, right? Yep. Easily replaced, easily yep. expendable. They didn't give a fuck about them. And you know where the birth of that union came from? <sighs> Which union? Well, the unions. To the work start unions, with. liberals. Wisconsin. Oh, was it Wisconsin? That's why it was kind of funny when Paul Walker was trying to take him away. They're like, "This is the they're like it's the birthplace of the union. This is the place that this is where the shit started. Man. Started getting the unions going and the the five day work week. Yeah, and it's, it's also the birthplace of McCarthy. So, yeah, he was a fuck up. <laughs> I'm trying Those- to over. Come the negative. You're you t- never will the do negative. It. Ryan, Wisconsin Ryan's giving us positive. some positive you reporting will never on Wisconsin. Do it. Wisconsin's also where the Freedom from Religion Foundation is at. And that's true. Dan Barker, yeah. That's some I, good cheese and beers. Yeah. Yeah. Harry I, and, Houdini and, and is from Green Bay, Wisconsin. I should I should probably mention that it's a beautiful state. It, it really, is. It really it's, is. It's a nice looking state. It's shape or what? Just like yeah, yeah, it's fucking green. It's the bright. Fucking Wisconsin yeah. booty, man. Green. They're quite. Wisconsin booty is usually quite large. No, it's, it's all the just, cheese and beer and uh, right, right. Mm. It's it's but it's densely forested. A lot of hardwoods. It's pretty rural. A lot of old forest. Not, old, yeah, nothing. old forest. Yeah, it's 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 got a what it's, survived it's, the lumber years. Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't. You you just you don't even have to go that far south into like Ohio and and some of those other midwest states where it just stinks like manufacturing all the time or indiana you know ugh. but wisconsin's got like a nice fresh outdoors smell and well the wisconsin got its name because of all those other industrialized places we had all the river systems to transport was, every wisconsin a native american name I don't know if it was Wisconsin. You mean like most it's all the brand towns. identity kind of thing? Well, yeah, because all the rivers and all oh. the locks that were able to take all the wood and all the trappers and actually transport all their goods, that's how they made their money through you know, all the logging industry. Or they could, hey, you can float all it's, your logs right up river and get right out. name. Okay. Yeah. Right out into, you know, the, the Great Lakes, and we can get you off to the East Coast. Hmm. Get your shit so, out of here and on out on the market. Anyway, pretty much. There you go. <laughs> 
Well, good. Oh, uh, what else have we got here? I lined up some other things. We talked about Donald Trump. Oh, so the American oh, Atheist yes. billboard. Well, for a second time. Yeah. Oh no! Not, oh no, no! Not the billboard. I was thinking the other one. Never mind. Not the billboard. Well, what? Huh? There was the the. Well, what? Huh? It wasn't the American Atheist. Well, what? Huh? It was the Freedom from Religion <laughs> Foundation's sign they had on the Capitol that got vandalized for the second time. Oh yeah. Over Christmas, I was I forgot about this one for a second. Uh, I'm gonna play the little news clip <laughs> here. New at ten tonight, a billboard on I-25 is a target for controversy, and now vandalism. A group called American Atheists launched a holiday billboard campaign that had people talking over the Christmas season. But now, someone's decided to write how they feel on the sign itself. KRDO News Channel 13's Emily Allen reports on this billboard that's turning heads once again. They say sticks and stones break bones, but words will never hurt. But one atheist says this message makes him sad. I would have hoped that we would have just been able to... You know, come together as friends, neighbors, brothers and sisters. But some people still just want to spread intolerance. American Atheists <laughs> launched a holiday billboard campaign in Colorado Springs. The group's Colorado Regional Director, Randy Godovich, expected some backlash, but not this. Someone spray painted, God is not dead on the billboard. Not God Their is not dead, just God's not childish dead. show of hateful intolerance did nothing to help their position, did nothing to help honestly good Christians, too. It tends to make them look bad, and nobody wants that. People in this neighborhood see that <laughs> sign every single day, so we ask them, what do they think of the vandalism? Uh, that's an uh, amen for whoever did it, you know. I, I, was, I was like wondering if it was a Christian person or it was somebody that was trying just to help. It's pretty sad to see to something what? vandalized like that, no matter whose opinion it is. Amparo Murray sees the sign from her driveway. Barely. She doesn't agree with its message <laughs> yeah. or the vandal's actions. Everybody has a right to their own opinion, but they don't have to blast it out to the world like that, uh, you know? So while an anonymous Scrooge I really has wanted to get this behind sign's her Christmas on, cheer, yeah, but there, American but... Atheist says it won't stop them from spreading their holiday like wishes next stuff. season. Yeah. Yeah. In Colorado Springs, Emily Allen Carrio, News Channel 13. The group was already planning want... on removing the sign in the next day or two. American Atheist National Headquarters has yet to decide if it will press charges if the vandal is found. Mm -hmm. I think they absolutely should. Uh, I just wanted to give a quick little shout out to uh, fellow regional director Randy Gotovich. Yeah, and and his little appearance there in the news. Good job, Randy. Well yeah, done. Nice job. I also want to point out too, as a uh, no longer but used to be professional sign painter. Yeah. The the moron that vandalized this obviously did not plan for the amount of space he had. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, God's not uh, out of space. <laughs> it's all crunched up at the end. Well, it's funny, too, because they didn't cover up the, the headline of the billboard that right, says, yeah, go ahead and skip, skip church. church. They covered up the rest of the stuff, and it says, holidays. God's not dead. So it's still, go ahead and skip church. God's not dead. <laughs> Or they didn't spray paint over the American atheist part of it, or it's more of that Christian love and acceptance. Yep, and I don't think that's spray paint. I think that's straight up like house paint on a roller. Yeah, that's what yeah, it looks I think like. It is. Yeah, really rough, crude bullshit. Cowards! They can't. They can't handle any opposing views. Like, well, and the the how we how weak do you have to be in your own belief system to go and vandalize a sign like this? Yeah, yeah. Which honestly doesn't say anything bad. No, it, it could have. They could have made it a lot like more antagonizing. No, the entire <laughs> billboard says, "Go ahead and skip church." Uh, be good for goodness let's sake. Be good, just be good, or let's be good for goodness sake. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. And somebody found that so horribly offensive, and and Dave kind of covers that in his book. Yeah, you know when yeah, he says he does a good a, job. A lot of the it. time, it doesn't even matter what you say, as long as it's in opposition to to the majority view of religion, it doesn't matter how kindly you put it, right. you're going to piss people off. Yeah. So why pussyfoot around? Right. Why why try to couch it in this flowery language? Just be honest and direct about it. Yeah. What you believe yeah. in is crap. Yep. And I really like their billboard they had, was it last year or two years ago, the myth one? Where they had all the pictures oh, yeah. on there. You know say, it's a myth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah it just, I, I don't, I, just the the weakness of their position is evident when they when they make these kind of actions, and I think Randy's comment about that was really great. You yeah. Know, that, yep. 
Yeah, the, he he was very diplomatic about it too. Yeah, yeah, he he was. That you know, it it doesn't make them look good. It doesn't. It does. Quote: The rather childish show of hateful intolerance did nothing to help their position. Did nothing to help good Christians. It tends to make them look bad, and no one wants that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I think that was a great response. I good think job, it was. Randy. Yeah. Perfect. Um, I also want to add. You know, you were saying the the Christian love thing. The only time that ever comes up is when you're brand new to a conversation and people don't know you're an atheist or when you start to bring up the less desirable parts of the Bible. Yeah. That's when that happens. Well, God is love and merciful and forgiveness, and that's why you should, but, you know, but as soon as you get into it, they don't believe any of that for a fucking second. No. Just like I was saying about Swanson, they believe in a vengeful, nasty, jealous, brutal God that expects you to get on your fucking knees and suck his dick for eternity. <laughs> Whoa. That dick sucking God's a very bad one. Yeah. Well, he's, he's been around for eternity, too. So, let's see. We've got some other things. We've got <clears throat> Rachel Maddow. We've got a couple things on Ted Cruz. We have yet to talk about the fucking dipshits in Oregon. Might be a long show. Yeah. We have Glenn Beck. I've got some international news as well. We've got about an hour left. Yeah. Trying to keep an eye on the time as best I can. Well, let's uh, let's let's toss it to Matt for some international news. I'm tossing it at you, buddy. Toss it at me. (laughs) Catch the ball. (laughs) Uh, China, China's first landing of a plane. On one of its new island runways oh, okay. in the South China Sea shows Beijing's facilities in the disputed region are being completed on schedule, and military flights will inevitably follow, foreign officials and an- analysts say. China's increasing military presence in the disputed sea could effectively lead to a Beijing-controlled air defense zone, uh, ratcheting up tensions with other claimants that and with the United States in one of the world's most volatile areas. Yeah, I think we had issues there this last year where we were having problems in that spot because mm-hmm. they're claiming, hey, you're encroaching on our you know, country. And everybody's like, no, this is international waters. You don't own this. Right. It's good, China. <laughs> Open your fucking ears. <laughs> Chinese foreign ministry officials confirmed on Saturday that, that a test flight by a civilian plane landed on an artificial island built in the Spratleys the first time Beijing has used a runway in the area. Vietnam launched a formal diplomatic protest while Philippines Foreign Ministry spokesman Charles Charles Jose said Manila was planning to do the same. Wait. Both have claims to the area that overlap with China. Philippines dude's name is Jose? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Phil- the Philippines <laughs> was a major uh, Spanish uh, tra- trade settlement during the... Uh, Exploration I, I, I just kind of figured everybody named Jose fled to America. No. Oh. No. Oh, you like Trump. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a very, you know, Mexican name when you think it's of Jose. It's a Spanish name, yeah, and because that was that was it, well, the Philippines is also very very Catholic, like 90 some percent. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, that's it was true. a Spanish settlement during the the Anyway. Uh that's the fear. This is the quote that's the fear that China will be able to take control of the South China Sea and it will affect the freedom of navigation and freedom of overflight, Jose told reporters. In Washington, State Department spokesman John Kirby uh, said China's landing of the plane, quote, remain, raises tensions and threatens regional stability. Senator John McCain, the, chair, the chairman of the influential U.S. Senate Armed Services Committee, criticized the Obama administration for delaying further, quote, freedom and navigation patrols within 12 nautical miles of the islands built in China. China has been building runways on the artificial islands for over a year, and the plane's landing was not a surprise. The runway at the Fiery Cross Reef is 3,000 meters, roughly 10,000 feet long, and is one of three... China was constructing on artificial islands built up from the seven reefs and atolls in the Spratlys archipelago. The runways would be long enough to handle long-range bombers and transport craft as well as China's best jet fighters, giving, giving them a presence deep in the maritime heart of Southeast Asia that they have lacked until now. Chinese official ha- officials have repeatedly stressed that the new islands would be mostly for civilian use, such as Coast Guard activity and fishing research. Huh. Foreign Ministry spokeswoman 
said at the weekend that the test flight, I have no idea what it was, <laughs> was intended to check whether the runway met civilian aviation standards and fell, quote, completely within China's sovereignty. However, military landings on the islands were now inevitable. Holy shit, said uh, somebody else. Uh, <laughs> a visiting fellow at the Australian National University Strategic and Defense Studies Center. An air defense zone will unlikely soon was while unlikely soon was feasible and possible in future in the future once China's built built up its air strength, he said. Quote the next step will be once they've tested it with several flights, they will bring down some of the the fighter air power SU twenty sevens and SU thirty threes. Russian and they planes? will station them there permanently. That's what they're likely to do. Ian Story, a man whose name I am, can pronounce, a uh, South China <laughs> Sea expert at Singapore's ICES, Yusof Ishak Institute. Said I he sees, you sees, we all sees? For ice cream. Uh, <laughs> expected tensions to worsen as China used its new facilities to project power deeper into the South China Sea. Even or you can! <laughs> 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 Noise. <clears throat> Uh, work is well underway to complete the range of port storage and personal personnel facilities of the new islands, U.S. and regional officials have said. Fiery Cross is also expected to house advanced early warning radars and military communication facilities. As these facilities become operational, Chinese, Chinese warnings to both military and civilian aircraft will become routine. These events are a precursor to an ADIZ or an undeclared but de facto ADIZ. And one has to expect tensions to rise. I don't know what that means. What is an ADIZ? I don't know. I don't know what that means. <laughs> they just threw it in there. ADIZ. Advanced directives. Directed zoo. Something zone. Zone, yeah. I'm sure. I, I wish it was zoo. Uh, I like zoo. Chinese Some Foreign Ministry spokeswom Defense. spokeswoman said on Monday that there was no immediate plans for the ADIZ in the South China Sea. She was a poet and didn't know it. <laughs> Oh. Air defense identification <laughs> zone. Ah, I did. Just, I got the zone part. I did just read that <laughs> and forgot. Uh, blah, 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 blah. That's basically it. Yeah, I love how like McCain's like, why Obama send more boats over there? But wait, now now get back to the Persian so we can bomb more ISIS. Wait, get back to China. Wait, get <laughs> get get back to ISIS. Yeah. Wait, now go to China. Why aren't you doing anything about ISIS? John McCain rolls only ones while playing game of risk. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Fuck that guy. So I got something here from Ted Cruz that I thought was wacky. I love Ted Cruz. Yeah. But what from Ted Cruz isn't wacky? I mean, really, when you look at it, what what are we going to do? Uh, this this. Can I punch this guy? I want, oh, I want to punch wouldn't him. Wouldn't the satisfaction of that like be worth a little bit of jail time? We should I just, just put a speed him. bag in here with pre with his face on it so we can just well, hit it. That'd be good. I just... <laughs> I just want to punch. I just want to punch him a little. I like bit. the speed bag. Just the yeah. It's uh, not easy. No. It's so not. this comes to us also from Right Wing Watch. Cruz campaign prom promotes video by radical birther who thinks Obama got a nose job to hide his real father. That's so fucking racist. <laughs> this whole thing is fucking crazy. Uh, the story says the all senator... this all this from a fucking Cuban born in Canada, by the way. Yeah, yeah, you fucking asshole. Uh, says I, I think you got your skin bleached to hide your fucking. <laughs> yeah, and you need a nose job. Sorry, everybody that listens to this show. That's not. Go ahead with the story. <laughs> Just move on, would you? <laughs> Senator Ted Cruz's presidential campaign has been circulating a bizarre viral video de depicting the Texas Republican as a rhino slaughtering Star Wars hero fighting a Darth Vader-esque President Obama. Now, oh, Jesus. Rhino being all caps for Republican in name only. Quote, in honor of the latest Star Wars movie, the team here at Cruz HQ wanted to share with you a YouTube video created by a fellow supporter that depicts Senator Cruz as a Jedi warrior fighting for the Constitution. Oh, jeez. The Cruz campaign wrote in an email to supporters last night, linking to a fawning Breitbart article about the video. A fawning Breitbart article about Ted Cruz? The hell you say? What? <laughs> I want to play this little video here. The, the still has Cruz... <sighs> Holding a lightsaber. But the lightsaber is made out of the Constitution. Yeah, the, the stock is made of the I can see we the rolled up scroll. The video is titled, The Constitution Strikes Back. Star Ted Cruz. Well, uh, well. Yeah, he's going to be a real powerful I've got a pen and I've got a pen. I can 
can use that term. Society taking orders. And we got this scrolling thing. It is a dark time for the Republic. A deceptive and radical donkey has seized the capital and shredded the Constitution. A powerful rebel mo- warrior must arise to unite the elephants and save the nation. Oh, God. And then the Constitution, Constitution. scrolls. Re- Republicans are so fucking subtle, aren't they? That's not even the Constitution. That's the Declaration it's of Independence. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Houston, Texas. We have an <laughs> oh, God, animated thing animated. of Ted Cruz riding a white elephant. elephant. With oil fields in the background. He catches the Declaration of Independence, smiles, turns into a lightsaber. I'm ready to go. Don't hurt that elephant. Oh, and it's a cross. Episode 8, The Crusade, (laughs) starring Ted Cruz. Maybe I should have watched this so I didn't have to just Imagine narrate the whole thing. millions of courageous conservatives all across America rising up together to say it is a time to reclaim the Constitution of the United States. I like States. how the animation is this just is as fight. inflexible as we- the real-life Ted Cruz. <laughs> yeah, it's just as inflexible. And I, am I just reading too much into this? He's riding a white, white elephant. elephant. Followed by new elephants that are appearing oh. across the states of varying color. Yeah, I mean, no, they're all one color. They're all he, he's, dark. <laughs> well, they're all not white, but yeah. they're yeah. There, there's definitely a pack of derms behind him. <laughs> <laughs> Stand together for liberty. Give me liberty, or give me death. I could easily pick one of those for you. <laughs> we will restore that shining city on a hill. Shining! That is the United States of America. Approaching the White House. Well, that's Congress there. Yeah, yeah the, uh, they have rhinos. Uh, the donkeys are shredding. The donkeys are shredding the Declaration of Independence while Obama looks on and smiles. And oh, now they're eating it. And now they're eating it. And Obama's on the smallest donkey, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Well, oh, Cruz, Cruz is on an elephant that's at least twice the size of the rest of them. And there are rhinos guarding President Obama and the donkeys that are shredding. Yeah, the only thing they're doing is laughing about eating the country. Cruz is like, I've had enough of this. Oh, what the fuck? Ah. Literally crushing rhinos. <laughs> One hit and the rhino was done. Rhinos. And the rest of them bow down to him. Yeah. So it was only really one battle. He does a front flip off the elephant, looks menacingly at the president. Donkeys run away. President Obama, follow the law. Never. Never. (laughs) Obama's giving up. Obama drops his phone and and runs away. Flip phone and a pen and then runs. Cheer. Wins, not even morning is coming. Yeah, the is... Constitution speak with you. That's the Declaration of Independence. Yeah. That was a terrible fucking Yeah, game. that was There wasn't even a battle scene. That was no. terrible. I'm gonna no. just cut that out of the show. <laughs> <laughs> that was awful. I don't oh, know. God. I was no, supposed no, to leave it to that. No, fucking leave it in. So that people know how dis- fucking despicable this fucking narrating. Are. Like, there was no. That was fucking awful. There was only yeah. one fight scene where an elephant knocked a rhino over and then punched his trunk into the rib cage of an, a rhino. <laughs> and all the other rhinos were like, that's it. I've had enough of this. <laughs> and the donkeys all run away. And- As if yeah, Ted Cruz is the weird. real Republican. Yeah, right, right. Obama drops his Obama phone and pen and runs away. It was a fucking flip phone. Yeah, that's what they give them now. I bet you Obama has more than a flip phone. No, no, for Obama phones. What? You even hear what they say about the Obama? During when Bush was in office, he started issuing had a thing where if you were low income and you were trying to get a job and employment that kind of stuff, you could qualify for a pager. So that way you'd know if some place was trying to call you for an employment. Well, since pagers have gone out of style, Obama changed it from a pager to a cell phone. So everybody's like, oh, Obama just gives cell phones to people. It's an Obama phone. Oh. Oh, All that horse shit. I gotcha. Okay. Um, 
Let's see. I got something here from Jim Baker. Last time we heard from Jim Baker was just last week when he was adorned. We were going through the failed predictions. Yeah, I've been seeing him a lot lately. I don't like it. This time he's not wearing a baseball cap with a cross on it. No. I'm surprised he doesn't have like a cross shaved into the side of his bald head. <laughs> uh, this this is him saying that Satan is using fire alarms to silence him. Mm. To your son, Jeremy, yeah. for doing that. The loneliness that. is feeding the pornography of this thing. <laughs> oh. The lo- oh. That's a, that's a, a I know that noise. That the devil's mad. <laughs> so, whenever, no, it means fire. They're, we, they're in a studio, and the fire alarm goes off. Uh, the, the story says, Yesterday, televangelist Jim Baker and radio host Rick Wiles, also one of my favorite people, launched into a discussion on the topic of pornography, which was abruptly stopped when a fire alarm sounded in Baker's television studios, probably because Jim Baker is so hot his pants are on fire. Wow. He's got a burning down in his nether regions. Uh, Baker, of course, promptly blamed the fire alarm on Satan. Quote, that's a signal that the devil's mad, Baker said. Quote, whenever we hit a subject that really stirs hell and Satan, the fire alarm, that goes off every time. Every time? Really? I, I would love to be able to go on a call and be able to write in the report that <laughs> he was lying so much his pants caught fire. He's just a lion dickbag. Uh, oh, hell, I'll play the rest All of this. Right. Hit a subject a that fire really alarm goes off. stirs hell and The Satan. fire alarm. The fi- it's yeah. a fire alarm. That's, that goes off every time. Well, Not every time you lie in <laughs> shithead. <laughs> America has changed. Yes. And yes. The, the vote came out last week of the who's who uh, in America – the most popular women and the most popular men. Mm-hmm. What's he? What's he getting into here? Do you know who the number one woman was? I can I can take a guess. Kardashian. Kim Kardashian. Was it Hillary Clinton. It was Hillary. Yeah. Hillary Clinton. Oh. Is the number one woman, and the number one man is President Obama by and both by huge so amounts. He's just mad it wasn't him. And America has changed, <laughs> and in in our president label it. He said. We are no longer a Christian country. We never were. Said, you, you can't what? call us that. Cause that's, uh, yeah, and that I never heard him right. say that. No. And yet the sad thing is we have turned away from God, and we're and, in deep trouble. You know, I, I've been I, I want him to cite a source. I've had so many come yeah. on that tell me that uh, they think we're, we're in the Third World War. What do you think? <laughs> do you think that the <laughs> Third, Third World, World War? War? No, it's already started. It's oh, already started. It's already oh, World started. War III. Right is, now. We're already into World War Three. Oh. The, the bombing, the, the, the military action in Syria commenced World War Three. Really? I discount the nations. The United States, Great Britain, Germany, France, Russia, and Iran. In Saudi Arabia, all right. There's seven nations and you've already decided involved that that's what makes the world in war. Syria, but <laughs> but when we had ago, even more than that involved in Iraq and Afghanistan, that it was leading a 34 nation military alliance what? that was going to invade Syria. Saudi Arabia isn't doing 30, fuck all, so add dude. 34 you know nations, it. not now. To to those seven, they're getting involved it, now. That's a world they war. They fucking better. Well, their embassy and, got bombed. <laughs> you know, people we're, were saying, "Well, nothing happened." In September. You mean yeah. after the Shemitah? Do we really need to listen to yeah, us this? they said nothing no, happened. They're, right. he's, they're just being all quacky and... Turds. Kooky and... They're just giant turds. But remember, Matt, mm-hmm. I just proved you wrong last time we said Saudi Arabia doesn't do anything. You did? Yeah. Saudi Arabia doesn't have an army, but they have an air force. Yeah, I don't give a shit. And their air force is always <laughs> has, been, has been flying against Hezbollah and other countries yeah. the whole time. They've got so much fucking land. They've got so much over. They, they're just sitting there counting their fucking dollars. They make off every bo- barrel of oil they send to the gullible West. And, you know, well, they've, they've got plenty, plenty, plenty of resource, money, and land to help refugees, and yet they've done absolutely I, nothing. I've, I've seen a lot of the land they have. Uh, yeah, but it's what is it's so much different from Syria where they come from. I mean, they could do well, something. It's, they could do something. It's like they could do at the least as Gobi. much as Germany's doing. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, of course they can. 
Of course they can. They have so many more. They have so much more money and so many more resources. Well, yeah, I'm not saying they don't have money, but and I'm bigger, going with... they have a bigger area than Germany has. I don't know any bad thing. I'm doing like, other things and do still. They would be. They would, they would... <laughs> <laughs> nah, fuck Saudi Arabia. Let's fuck Israel about, too. Fuck about, Israel. Let's... Fuck Israel. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to talk about Al Qaeda? Oh God. <laughs> Yal Qaeda. So sure. Who one did, of, oh Jesus. What one of the one of the promos that I'll be dropping into the show somewhere here. I may have done it earlier. I may do it right after this. Who knows? I don't. It's gonna happen in post. <laughs> <laughs> I never know. We'll but do it, it in post. It will be from. Uh, <laughs> Fuck it. We'll do it in post. <laughs> it will be. It'll be from Tucker. Hey y'all, this is Tucker from the Atheist in the Trailer Park podcast. And I might live in a beer can, but I ain't no inbred redneck. And if you listen to my podcast, I'm gonna learn you something. And no, I ain't talking about how to marry your cousin and not have kids with 16 fingers and stuff like that. I mean, I actually talk about real stuff. Teach people where the Bible stole its stories from. So y'all give me a listen, would you? Thank you. It's kind of funny. Uh, in the, there's a, there's a Facebook group where us secular or atheist podcasters, skeptics, uh, kind of discuss equipment and show ideas and shit like that. And he had posted something earlier today. I just pulled out a little blurb of it, but he, one of, part of his, part of his post said, right now, y'all Kate is holed up in a bird <laughs> sanctuary calling for Al Shabubba members to join them in their yeehaw. <laughs> I thought that was fucking funny. <laughs> I fucking, I read that at work yeah. while I was on break. <laughs> I thought that was very funny, yeah. so I wanted to drop that in there. So, you guys, you've heard a little bit about what's happening in it's, Oregon, right? It's been developing since Saturday. I've been doing, I did a little research into the area, so I try to get myself a little knowledgeable about this, because I knew we'd be talking about it, and I knew dumb fucks on the internet would be talking about it, too, so I had to have the correct ammo to go at them with. I'm going to take this picture of Ammon Bundy and put aliens. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's the same yes. pose. Yes. Actually. <laughs> yes. You know what? I like it. That's good. Send me or or just copy that photo, uh-huh. and I can actually cut him out of that photo and uh-huh. put the same background that the alien guy has oh, yeah, behind easy. him. You could do that. Okay. Easy. It's pure oh, yeah. white. It's almost yeah. pure white. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> That'd be super easy. I'll do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna save that right now. Uh, so anyway, no, it's you should fucking do Moroni. <laughs> the alien Moroni. <laughs> Captain Moroni. <laughs> Fucking douchebag. So, Eamon Bundy. Ammon. Is it Ammon? It's Ammon. It's Ammon, for sure. Name right out of the Book of Mormon. Yep. Says that... Named, af- named after the Mormon prophet of old, who was famous for lopping off the arms of the Native Americans and bringing a bag of said severed arms to King Limhi. To gain respect. That was the prophet. Was this in the land of Moron? No. Yes. Uh, no, it was not. It was, <laughs> no. <laughs> land of Moron? This was, I think, outside of Zarahemla, but. There is a land of Moron. Yeah, there oh, is. is there? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were making a joke. No. No, there actually, oh. yeah. Yeah. And there's actually a prophet, or was he a prophet? Nimrod? Who else? Nimrod, ah. yeah. yeah. Was he a king? King, maybe. King. I think it was King. Anyway, Nimrod. yeah. But this guy's named after the the. Good old peaceful prophet of cutting arms off the Native Americans. So Ammon Bundy, he's also the son of Cliven Bundy, who you may recall yeah. from Arizona. From such Nevada. glorious stories in Arizona of the armed standoff with federal agents. Uh, anyway, Ammon Bundy says that he's on a mission from God. God. He's like a blues brother with a <laughs> cowboy hat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this story comes from local KUTV news, uh, here in Utah. Headline, I just gave away, the story says, (laughs) Portland, Oregon. (laughs) Looks like it comes from the AP. Uh, the man behind the armed occupation of a federal wildlife refuge comes from a Mormon family that has been challenging government authority for at least two decades. Ammon Bundy, like his father in previous confrontations, says he is following directions from God and invokes his family's Who faith when explaining cares? the anti-government movement he is attempting to lead, which, of course, goes against the, what is it, the 12th doctrine where 
Word of wisdom, something. Huh? Eh, I don't to know. obey the laws of the land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What is that? Is that um, in the? That's not. That's not an article of faith. That's. Uh, yeah, it is. It's twelfth article of faith. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Twelfth article of faith. Thank you. I like the term was eluding me momentarily. Uh, two years ago, Cliven Bundy was at the center of an armed standoff with federal officials over grazing rights on government land. Federal officials backed away from seizing the Nevada, ca- ra- the Nevada rancher's cattle, but the dispute remains unresolved, and the Bureau of Land Management says the family has not made payments toward a $1.1 million grazing fee and penalty bill. Now, Cliven Bundy's son has put himself in the spotlight, this time in Oregon, in a dispute over someone else's ranching operation. His armed group is pressing federal authorities to turn over government land to local control. <laughs> Ammon Bundy came to Oregon hoping to rally support behind his cause, but his tactics have been broadly rejected by many locals, by the state's main ranching group, and by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You know, the Mormons. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I don't know if it's in there. And the man who they're there to rally for said, get the fuck out. <laughs> uh, in a statement issued Monday, Mormon leaders said the Oregon land dispute, quote, is not a church matter, end quote, but they determined the seizure... But they condemned the seizure and said they were, quote, deeply troubled, end quote, by reports that suggest the armed group is acting, quote, based on scriptural principles. Oh, God, come on. The ranchers that Ammon Bundy came to defend rejected his assistance and on Monday voluntarily surrendered to serve a federal prison term on a 2012 conviction on charges of committing arson on federal land. Even some even some militia groups say Ammon Bundy has gone too far. One of them, the Oath Keepers, was present. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Even some other terrorist groups have said that Ammon Bundy has gone too far. Even the Oath Keepers. Yeah, even the Oath Keepers. Which are not the most stable, level-headed group in the world. No. But they've never done anything like this. Yeah. Was present at the 2014 Bundy Ranch standoff in Nevada. Their leader issued a statement last week saying Ammon Bundy had picked the wrong battle. Quote, we cannot force ourselves or our protection on people who do not want it, end quote. Oath what? Keeper founder Stuart Rhodes said last week on the group's website. Well, they weren't they weren't invited there. Yeah, yeah but I didn't know the Oath Keepers gave a shit about that. <laughs> well, they were invited to Arizona, but they weren't invited here. Speaking through their attorney, Dwight Hammond Jr. and son Stephen said they preferred to turn themselves in and serve out their sentence. Quote, and that clear statement of their intent should be the end of the discussion on this, Rhodes said. Mm-hmm. And Ammon Bundy has said he had never heard of the Hammond case until his father mentioned it to him. You can just picture old Pappy Bundy Spreading sitting lies. down with Ammon. You know, <laughs> Ammon, we the people are out <laughs> all over and the government is taking away our rights. Anyhow, the Hammonds were convicted of arson three years ago of setting fires on federal land in 2001 and 2006. One of the blazes was set to cover up deer poaching, according to prosecutors. Uh, Another crime. The men served no more than a year until an appeals court judge ruled that the terms fell short of minimum sentences requiring them to serve about four more years. Uh. Ammon Bundy said he prayed about the matter and, quote, clearly understood that the Lord was not pleased with what was happening to the of Hammonds. Of course you got that quote. message. You fucking piece of shit. <laughs> Weird how those messages from God always perfectly align with what they already exactly believe. Exactly what you believe. Yeah. yeah. The Hammonds. What about the federal agents who prayed about it, who clearly understood that the Lord was not pleased with Ammon Bundy skipping out on his prison sentence? Yeah. <laughs> the Hammonds said they lit the fires to reduce the growth of invasive plants and protect their property from wildfires, which is horseshit. Quote, I did exactly what the Lord asked me to do, end quote, yeah. Bundy said in a YouTube video posted last week in which he appeals to like-minded people to join him in Oregon to protest against the treatment of the Hammonds. In the 2014 showdown with federal authorities in Nevada, Cliven Bundy also justified his actions in religious terms, saying that mm-hmm. he decided to challenge federal agents after praying for guidance. I just want to say to all the people who I've been arguing with for three days on Facebook about the fact that these aren't Christian terrorists because they have not expressed any religious motives, fuck you. Oh, they, they express religious motives day one. Right from yeah. the get-go. Yeah. yeah, fuck off. Right from the get-go. Go do your goddamn research and then approach me on Facebook, you fucking morons. Uh, the story continues, I'm skipping over quite a bit here, and ends with many locals agree with Ammon Bundy that the second Hammond's sentence was too harsh, considering the crime. <laughs> but they disapprove of Bundy's occupation and fear it could lead to violence. Those concerns were shared by John O'Keefe, president of the Oregon Cattlemen's Association, who said Monday that this group, quote, does not support illegal activity taken against the government. Hmm. And then, 
Mr. Amund Bundy and some of his cohorts decided that they were going to go to a federal building that was unoccupied at the time. Because they're on holiday break. Because they're, yeah, nobody's working. Yeah, go to an empty building. An that empty just happens bird to be refuge building. A bird refuge building, yeah. And Which it would, would be open today. Take it over. Take it from the hands of the government. Yeah. yeah. This, this, is, this, is, this is where our migrating species tend to summer. Um, over here and, we have a whole variety of native, native flowers that, that we tend to keep track of. The fucking tyranny! Well, the tyranny and of the if government. you look in this corner, you can see God. the rednecked asshole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, in the, the issue that is horribly wrong with their idea in the first place is they're taking over this land to say they want to give the land back to the people. The people that he's referring to. The Native saying, Americans? No. No. Oh. no. <laughs> he wants to give the land over to what? loggers what? and miners. Uh, so, so not the people who owned it originally. No. No, which is what he doesn't understand. Well, not only that, this but this land has never belonged to the state of Oregon. It has never. But this been land is your hand. land. This land no. is my land. From no. California to the New York Islands. No, you see, <laughs> from the we, redwood forests, there were there was this group of people <laughs> to here. the Gulf Stream waters. Oh, I thought it was. Yeah. Uh, this land was made for you and me. To right? the Walmart oh. parking, I thought it was. <laughs> what is it? Oh, but not le- all to land. To the is, Oregon bird refuge. Not not all <laughs> not all land is is treated equal. Because you see, yeah, but they don't care about Oregon State. They're they're worried about no, federal no, th- land. I'm getting to that. Just wait one second. <laughs> I'm getting Don't there. You point your finger. I'm at getting me, Ryan. there. <laughs> because they Pointy say Pointerson. that this land belongs to everyone. And like I like okay, that song is false, Dan. I'm, I apologize to ruin <laughs> all your childhood memories of singing that song. That this Mrs. Land, Carson would be very upset with I, you, Ryan. I, I know. But not all land is treated equal. You see, when we came to this here, you mean country, it's like people? No, well, it, it, sh- it should be more like people. We treat people better sometimes, but we treated a certain sect of people very poorly when we came here, and we did a thing where we forced them onto reservations. We said, "Fuck I you." Was for their own protection. Well, we it gave really them wasn't. blankets. <laughs> we gave them blankets and whiskey, and we fucked their whole lives up. We let them open casinos. True, they are kind of fun. But the federal government over time in the 1800s started taking back that land slowly and slowly and slowly until they whittled their the, the Paiute reservation land in the area down to a small chunk of land, and which is kind of funny because the name of the reservation is also the name of the bird refuge they took over, which is where the name came from. So that land, before the Oregon became part of the United States of America, belonged to an Indian tribe. The Paiute Indian tribe, res- that was their reservation. The Malheur? The Malheur, yep. Malheur? That's, that's, that was the name of their the reservation. It was the Paiute Indian, on the, I can't pronounce that. That was the name of the reservation yeah. they were put onto. Uh-huh. And slowly the government took the land back over. And now at, Bundy is there saying, give this land back to the state who, who should own it so our people can use it. This land never belonged to the state of Oregon. This land has always been in the hands since the United States had it, either the Indians, the Native Americans, or the federal government. Hmm. So he's trying to take land that never rightfully belonged to the state in the first place and hand control of it over to the state. So they can strip mine it, cut all the the trees down. So the thing that kills me about guys like this is that, you know, they're they're all for states' rights and this belongs to the state. These are all arbitrary borders we've drawn for one reason or another. Yeah. You know, it, it's where a river meets or intersects a bit of land or where a mountain range cuts through the land mm-hmm. or, you know, these are all fucking arbitrary things that we've just drawn on a fucking map. Yeah, all kinds of natural borders, boundaries. There's, yeah, there's, there's no rhyme or reason necessarily for it to say this is this state. That's just, it's, it's all just a bullshit concept, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm a believer in having no more borders. Yeah, it's it's silly. Well, I've got to defend this state. Well, what if we drew the line just like two feet this way? Would you defend this land too? No, it's not part of this state. You're a fucking retard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, this other story that I pulled up comes from KSL. Uh, did you guys know that Mr. Fighting the Man, Ammon Bundy, leader of armed protesters, took out a $530,000 federal loan? To start his business. <laughs> As a small business. Uh, this comes from CNN. 
What a douchebag. Ammon Bundy, leader of the armed protesters who took over, who took over a federal building in Oregon and his family are known for battling the federal government. But Bundy told CNN on Tuesday that he's not opposed to government. Right. Uh, yeah. And said that taking a six figure loan from the SBA, Small Business Administration, doesn't conflict with his political philosophy. Yeah. I just, I just want to say since he's invoked religion so many times, the, SBA should also invoke religion and say, "Okay, we're going to we're no. going to we're all Jewish bankers. Now you owe us 11 times the yeah. uh, the loan that we gave you." <laughs> Which is no that that's not just like a stereotypical Jewish joke. That's actually the Jewish law. You pay back. Oh, really? Yeah, you times? pay back eleven times. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I wasn't just making a, a Jewish banker joke. I, I threw a little bit of that in there. <laughs> <laughs> Bundy borrowed five hundred thirty thousand dollars in twenty ten for his company, Valet Fleet Service LLC, according to public records on USAspending.gov. Valet Fleet Service is a truck maintenance company in Arizona. Quote: I am not anti-government. End quote. He said when asked about the loan while standing outside the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge, yeah. adding that he thinks, quote, there's a role for government and that the federal government's role is to protect the states from the outside world. Oh, Jesus. And the state's role is to protect the counties from the federal government and the county's role is to protect people from the state so the people can go about freely using their lands and resources and their rights. So there's a role, but all government's role is to serve the people. Whenever them governments step out, then that's when we step in. (laughs) And do absolutely fucking nothing, you piece of shit. Bundy denied he was being hypocritical about the loan because, quote, it was an effort in assisting the people and using their rights. Oh, God. So it's your right to take money, (laughs) and it's also your right to fight back and take over bird refugees. It's my right to take out this federal loan, and it's my right to... Tell the federal government to go, go fuck, fuck themselves. themselves. <laughs> yeah. And I can think of at least three federal offenses you've committed this week. Right. Mm-hmm. right. He's going to go to jail for a long, long well, time. Well, prison, I hope. He's got, yeah. well, it'll be federal prison because it's a federal, yep. federal offense. Breaking and entering because it was a closed business. He had to break into the place to get in there. Yep. Uh, criminal trespassing because yep. the place was closed and carrying a loaded firearm inside of a federal building. Yep. And Which, terrorism. Yeah, that is that That's is a, a federal a federal offense. offense. And terrorism. That's that one's going to be the tricky one that they're going to have to charge. It's not with. tricky. No, it's just. <laughs> I mean, technically, I, I'm sure. I, I I think I know where you're going, and I kind of agree. They probably will end up dropping it if they even charge them at all. Well, but the, they the, absolutely the only, the, should. The rate. The only reason. The only ground I think to actually have legitimate terrorism charges put against them is the fact is that the by city, definition, <laughs> no, is the fact that the city had to close down its schools over fears that this group was causing. Good and enough. That, that's what terrorism striking fear in. It's like they have it, it was terrorism by definition. I hope without, they are charged with terrorism. With it, yeah. it was. By, it was oh, I hope so too. Yeah. I hope so too. It was it's terrorism just, by definition without the closing of the school. That's just icing on the cake. And I think I think to make a point, the federal government absolutely has to pursue terrorism above all the other charges to the very end if they can help if they can it's that's that's the one make that, an example of these assholes yeah i mean i hope they do for christian domestic terrorism uh the protesters call themselves the citizens for constitutional freedom ccf <laughs> and they say they're not budging anytime soon from the refuge facility near burns quote we came well prepared. We're in it for the long haul, end quote, said protester John Ritzheimer. Ritzheimer. Who wow. has previously attracted attention for organizing anti-Islam rallies in Arizona. He's also the same guy who sent a message on YouTube to his family saying, I might not come home from this. I think that's mm-hmm. the guy who I also saw a picture of rubbing bacon on a Quran before he Probably. burned Probably. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's the uh, one who's wearing the shirt that said, fuck Islam. Yeah. There have been no police at the snowy, desolate wildlife refuge since the occupiers took over the main building on Saturday. And that's a smart decision by authorities, analysts say. I agree. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, I do too. I think they should just wait them out. There's no need to go in there, guns blazing or anything. To harm lives. Yeah. Uh, What could happen next? Law enforcement should just wait the protesters out, experts say. Quote, there's no real reason at this point to go in, and the FBI knows that, said Steve Moore, a retired supervisory special agent for the FBI. He said federal authorities have learned that, the, that lesson the hard way. Take, for example, the deadly confrontation at the Branch Davidian compound in Waco, Texas in yep. 1993. 
you guys are probably a little young to remember. No, that. I remember. I yeah. remember. What, I remember it yeah. happening by David no Karash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Um, quote: A hundred people died in that. Moore said it was a suicide. However, it was provoked by the FBI intervention. So, how long should authorities wait? And what would? F- and what? F- F- Jesus. And what would force that tactic to change? Quote, I think they will wait a long, long time, Moore said. The only thing that would force them to change that would be if these people posed a life and death threat to someone. And since they're secluded, they don't really pose a threat to anyone. Yeah. Other than themselves being yeah. dipshits and starving because they don't have snacks. That's why I think that, that well, that's going to be the next <laughs> tactic. Cause... Uh, the FBI, which is leading the investigation, hasn't specified what it will do. Quote, the FBI is working with the Harney County Sheriff's Office, Oregon State Police, and other local and state law enforcement agencies to bring a peaceful resolution to the situation at the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge. End quote. The agency's Portland office said in a statement, quote, due to safety considerations for both those inside the refuge as well as the law enforcement officers involved, we will not be releasing any specifics with regard to the law enforcement response. I guarantee there's already snipers watching the place. Did you hear their list of demands? <laughs> yeah, they're stupid. <laughs> they're, they're completely fucking stupid. This this puts me in a little bit of a tricky spot. Yeah, what's that? Because of the the position that I've taken before on police action. Because uh, per- you agree with this one? Particularly against minority groups and their willingness to be completely indiscriminate in... Uh, murdering the suspected suspected uh, suspects, victims, whatever, without due process. They just act as judge, jury, executioner, death sentence, capital punishment right on the spot. That judge well, and you got to think, this is a completely different subset of well, police taking this. This is the FBI. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't... Yeah, this isn't local... This local, isn't local law enforcement. This, this isn't a city cop. Yeah. This is FBI. So they, they do stuff in a different way. I, I get that. This beat of fits. What, what I, what I want to say, though, and this, this is where it's tricky for me, because it's unfortunate, in a sense, that these guys are white Christians, because that makes my position a little bit tougher to try to, to, try to elaborate. But I, I want to be very careful about not making it sound like I'm on on board with not running in there and killing them because they're white Christians. That has nothing to do with it. But I also don't want to create a no-win situation for law enforcement where it's like they run in and kill somebody and I'm on their back. They run in they don't run in and kill anybody and I'm on their back. Does that make sense? So I think they are doing the right thing in this situation. Well, I think you don't want them to kill anybody, period. Yeah. Right. And so I think in this situation they're doing the right thing. I only wish that they would do the right thing more. I, I think I think the more situation often. dictates dictates the amount of force involved. I think if, so if, too. If this building were in the middle of town, I guarantee the police presence around that building would be a lot stronger. Sure. I guarantee you would have the armored vehicles out there. You'd be having a lot more going on. Right. But since the building is secluded and they're the only ones that they're going to harm are each other, and there's no interaction with the outside world there they can take a more standoffish yeah. type situation i i totally agree i i think they're doing this the right way i just don't want it to come across as you know i'm willing to give the police a pass on this because they're white christians and i'm white you know i i want to make sure that's not the motivation i i think this is the way that it should be handled if in every case if possible well uh, you know fatalities should be minimized yeah. every time you possibly can uh I think they're I think they're doing the right thing in this case, but it has nothing to do with the race. No, I don't I don't think Agreed, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I even think if this were a group of Muslim terrorists that went into this building. Yep. They would be acting the same way. Yeah, I because well, uh, unless I they don't took, know if they would be, but they should be. Given the same situation, I bet they would do the same thing. I think they should be. I'm not ready to say they would. If the FBI runs in a different they yeah. it I mean I'm just saying. The people I'm that just are trying more, to say for me personally. They're at a whole nother level. I, I was going to say that the FBI, are the ones that they usually have a higher degree of education before they enter that kind of workforce. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and they uh, they've learned but, their lesson yes. from 1993, right? Well, that, <laughs> David Koresh, and, yeah. Yeah. And and other things, but but you would think the city cops would have learned by now too. You know, well, they haven't the either. But I'm just if this would have happened in a larger city, the city cops might have fucked it up already. Right. But because this is such a small town, it's like well. 
I got me and Opie. Yeah, I'm not trying That's to make it. I'm not trying to make a point on any of this yeah. as a whole. I'm saying from my position, I don't want I mean because people are used to hearing me go off about yeah. police That's what I was waiting for overreach. <laughs> Which, which I, which I would. And the fact that this is a situation which would normally call for something like that. And the fact that I'm not going off on that, I just want to make sure that it's clear that it's not racially motivated. I don't want to put the, I don't want to put my position on the police actions in a no win situation either. Yeah. Yeah. So I think this is the right thing, but they should do that all the time. Yeah. It, That's the distinction I'm trying to make. It, 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 I don't care it, if it's it feds or city. I don't, it doesn't matter. Fatalities should be minimized every time, yeah. all the time, no matter what. And That's with this one, position. especially when we already have the group saying if there's a show of force on the outside, they're going to have a show of force coming back at them. Oh, if, if a single They've shot already, is fired it's out gonna of go, that refuge, it's going to go ballistic. They should fucking bring an A10. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. That building actually looks quite nice. It's a, it's a nice looking cabin. A10 would be perfect for this. It'll blow the fucking thing. <laughs> There'll be, be nothing perf- left. Perfect for this. Yeah. But uh, we were talking about it a little bit before the show. They've already cut off power. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was 18 degrees Fahrenheit. They did that today. Yeah. They was, cut off power the today. High. They're going to be cutting off the rest of the utilities in a certain order. I, I don't know if they're going to, if they got some sort of, if they're talking with them and they're just kind of doing it in a staggered predetermined plan. I would plan. just shut off all the shit right now. Yeah, I would, I would say, why, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Your heat, your water, everything, done. Yeah. Uh, but they're still, apparently, you had said that they're still allowed to go in and out on the road to resupply, like they're letting people that go was back. Just, that was a tweet that I saw. Okay. I, I didn't confirm that. I don't know if that's true. I, I honestly think that the next... After all their, I can't imagine that the feds would let them leave. Yeah, I mean, without I can imagine them. they would let them walk out, walk through the barricade, whatever. Let them leave. They wouldn't let them back in. They'd be like, no, no, no. Whoa. Look, dumbass, you're not going back in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna arrest you right here, and no, um, and I, nobody else is coming in here to re. Yeah, I'm, I'm, no. I'm, yeah. Right. The, They're not letting people in. Road in and out's cut off, in my opinion. Yeah, that's what should happen next. And everybody that exits that building gets is handcuffed. Arrested. Yeah, handcuffed, arrested. You're going to sit in jail until we get all this shit figured out. Until Ammon, who was the last guy in there, you go in and find his... You know, I don't think his, he'll be the his, last guy in there. You think he's going to pussy out? Oh, definitely. Oh, he's a huge fucking nutbag. Yeah. he He's he's the one that has to stay in there because he's... Already, he, he, if there's anybody that has to stay in that building for the long haul to kind of prove their point, he's, as shitty as it is, is him. Yeah. yeah, yeah you th- think he exactly. will, though? You this, think is, this is the guy who... think he has the courage of his convictions to actually do that? This is the guy whose no. lifelong legacy has been anti-federal government, just like McVeigh. And rather than do something like that, he just takes like over an unoccupied bird refuge in yeah. rural Oregon. <laughs> this is Which, not a guy that's... And, way to go, hero. Well, <laughs> I think he did uh, I'm not his homework to make a it. hero. I'm not trying to make a hero out of McVeigh either, by My the way. My thing is, I think he... But, this 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 wasn't something that was just out of the blue. Like we're gonna do this. I think it was it was pretty, in my opinion, well planned. Yeah, what a pansy! <laughs> he planned it to well, yeah. go this way. He did. He yeah, and then two days later, he's like, "Camp is hard, mom. Send snacks." <laughs> but I think he also planned on being more forced to show up. My fourteen year old has been out longer in the weather than this fucking asshole. He, 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 he wasn't planning on getting. He figured there are, there are way more people. Would were be just it, as stupid as he is. Yeah, and that didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. Luckily for the rest of us, but there I, are not as many stupid people as he imagined there are. I think he was he's smart in a way, but he's also not as bold as he claims he to be. He took over the building on a day it was closed. If that building had been open and he took hostages in the building. Well, that would have been bad. Yeah. That, that would have instantly been I, <laughs> really, I, really bad. I for bet him. he would have let them leave. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that. That I don't. I don't know that he. Pl- I, yeah, the, the well, whole thing yeah, doesn't who knows? seem all I, that Because the the, the, the place was closed for the holidays. And I say that it's not planned because they don't even know what the fuck they want. So yeah, they don't know what so their demands the days, are. They don't know what their food is. Well, I, I was just reading some of the blogs that come out from these people that are in these groups. Yeah, and they're all like, "Yeah, he's been planning this for a while. It's been kind of out there." He's like, well, why didn't everybody else know? But like, we just gotta listen to him. He said it right here. He's planning on doing a big action. Well, so for well, a big action. Yeah, I mean that, that doesn't well, that covers just about anything. You people know? on the inner circle knew more information than people on the outer. So he was asking for them to get involved. So those 150 protesters knew well, he's going to do something big. It sounds to me like he planned to do quote something big without any detailed specifics of it. I'm going to do something. Okay, great. Yeah. You've got a plan. You're going to do something. Good I guess this, I guess the higher people in their militia knew what was going to happen. And then, well, well, and I say it doesn't sound like there's a whole lot of planning that went into this because for two days the group made only vague statements well, yeah. about what would make them leave. But, but on I, Monday night, protesters 
or protest spokesman Ammon Bundy laid out specific demands. The occupation would end when, quote, the Hammonds are freed and the federal government gives up control of the Malheur National Forest, Bundy tweeted. The tweet yeah, right. was later deleted. Because he doesn't even know what the fuck he wants. He's no. just there to be a dickhead. I yep. think he assumed that the rest of the people that showed up for that rally would follow him in. And they didn't. To what end, though? What, what that's he the has thing is, no he has no demands. He doesn't know what the fuck he wants other than the government's bad and I'm gonna stand for we the people. Why he, well, he's not a good leader. Because yeah. everybody once they figured out he's like, Oh, you're gonna take over a federal building? Fuck you yeah, not, dumbass. Not, not only that, but like as if fucking President Obama is going to give up a national forest because you live in a goose bungalow. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. You dumb fucker. Um, he said he doesn't want the situation to turn violent. Quote, as I said on CNN this morning, I love my wife and family, Bundy tweeted. <laughs> I have no plans nor desire to die. His Twitter account is oh, currently now. suspended. Now he has no plans to die. Now that now that he's worried about the feds might come in, yeah. I, I, oh shit! I bet in the feds and the NSA had something to do with his Twitter account being suspended. Yeah, he's real tough with his guns against people who don't actually have training or guns. <laughs> as soon as he's in real trouble, he's like, "I don't have plans to die." I swear. So so ostensibly, he shows up to defend the Hammonds from the overreach of the yeah. federal government, right? <laughs> But throughout the siege, he's claimed that the two ranchers were targeted for not selling land to the government. But the father and son ranchers, the Hammonds, have distanced themselves from Ammon <laughs> oh, and the yeah. group. Yeah, nice. Quote, neither Ammon Bundy nor anyone within within his group slash organization speak for the Hammond family. End quote. The Hammonds family, <laughs> W. Allen Schroeder, wrote to Harney County Sheriff David Ward. On Monday, the Hammonds turned themselves in to prison to serve their five-year sentences. Now it's time for the protesters to end the siege, the sheriff said. You said you were here to help the citizens of Harney County. That help ended when a peaceful protest became an armed occupation, Ward said. The Hammonds have turned themselves in. It's time for you to leave our community and go home to your families and end this peacefully. Hmm. Hopefully. And I think I that, hope it's ended peacefully. I hope that these yeah. assholes are all thrown in federal prison for a very long time. Yep. I think the sheriff did the right thing, but also I think his hands are tied a little bit by the fact that it is federal land, but I think he's taking the right action, being like, well, wait, I have a very small police force. We're a small town. This isn't something we normally deal with. You know, it would be wonderful. Thank yeah. you for doing this on federal land so the feds can come in and take care of this. <laughs> is that these these Yalkata yahoos waging their yeehawed <laughs> get fucking arrested, thrown in federal prison, and Ammon... Gets out. Has to, as part of his retribution, has to pay for all of the lost funds and mm -hmm. all of the expenditure from the local, state, oh, and Ammon. federal police yeah. forces, and basically is put out of business on the five hundred plus thousand dollar loan oh, that he took yeah. from the federal government, as, as well as an increase. They seize his business to pay for the expenses he, of handling all of this he's bullshit. He's going to have to sell his business just to afford the, for the lawyer in this shit. Yeah. yeah, as well as an increase on the property taxes he owns for the reason why he did this in the first place. And then we can all tweet at him, let the market sort it out, you libertarian <laughs> fuck. Well, his Twitter got canceled, so he probably can't tweet at him. <laughs> My point still stands. He's, he's just a delusional <laughs> asshole. So I have another article here. That's just not thought out at where all. Where he compares himself to George Washington, who quashed the Whiskey Rebellion. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, uh, is he is he anti-alcohol as well? This, I'm, this I imagine well, so. Well, he's LDS, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I imagine probably so. Uh, this was posted today. Uh, says so yesterday, he's doing all this sober. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yesterday, which is really crazy. Yeah, that's right? even I more know. shocking. It's yeah. not even a, hey, y'all, I gotten, drank a 12-pack. Let's see what I can do now. I've gotten really fucked up before and never had this idea. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday, which would have been Monday, Ammon Bundy gave an interview with Jacobin about his seizure of a federal building in Oregon, telling the magazine that he and his fellow militia members are, quote, Preparing to camp for a long standoff against federal agents for when they show up. Oh, brother. End quote. Bundy, the son of Nevada rancher Clavin Bundy, who made racist remarks during his own standoff with the federal government, also spent time criticizing the Black Lives Matter movement, which he says was responsible for, quote, lots of looting and violence toward businesses and innocent citizens. All right. End quote. So I have I have an idea, then. Yeah? If... Lay it on me, brother. If... 
If you decide you don't want to acknowledge the existence of the federal government, you do not get to take part in the First Amendment. Oh. Uh, Fuck you. Yeah, if you're not going to... Yeah, you don't get your freedom of speech and your freedom of religion if you're going to say that this is... Fuck you. No. Rights that are protected by the federal government. Yeah, fuck off. Uh, he insisted that he and his allies are not terrorists and warned off <laughs> and warned <laughs> oh my God, if that's not poisoning the well <laughs> and warned of the prospect of a violent attack on his group by law enforcement. Oh God, that just sorry. That just conjures up images of the 10 year old in the supermarket. That's like, <laughs> I'm not stealing a candy bar. What we we never we didn't even I never said you were. What are you talking <laughs> yeah. about? And ISIS you have doesn't a, call themselves terrorists. Yeah, either. you have a seventy year old man. We are not terrorists. It's, what? Uh, okay, it's like, so I'm trying I'm to suspicious. remember the name. Of, I'm trying to remember the name of the woman who ran on the GOP ticket a while back, who who produced that who produced the campaign ad that started out with "I'm not a witch." <laughs> oh God, yes. <laughs> who was that? Christine something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That. Fuck yeah, it was Christine. Oh, uh, the name is gonna kill me. I gotta look that shit up. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I exactly. See. Exactly though. You, you know, when when you bring up stuff Christine out of Christine O'Donnell. Yep, yep. When you, <laughs> I'm not a witch. I'm not a witch. <laughs> when you bring up stuff like that out of the blue, it immediately like, draws suspicion. Wait, did somebody call or, you a witch? What or are you should about? we are not terrorists. Okay. Uh, so these are quotes directly from Ammon Bundy. I do think the government has violence on its mind. That's why they have taken so long to show up. That's what? why they took so long to show up, because they have violence on their mind? Usually people like violence to spur the moment. Yeah, it's We're like, boom, I'm, I have violence on the mind. I'm going to be there as fast as I can to kick your ass. Oh, it goes into paranoid codes. I believe they're planning something for us to finally get rid of us once and for all. Yeah, well, we'd all appreciate that. They use force against us. We will fight back to defend ourselves. I hope we don't have to do that. I hope this all ends peacefully and the government does the right thing for once. And puts you in jail. <laughs> he also compared himself to George Washington, saying that just as Washington challenged British rule, he is leading a fight against the U.S. government. George Washington is inspiring to me for what he did to help found this country and all the founding fathers by how they took a stand against the British. Okay, you know that's federal government, right? I don't have any faith in our government anymore. I don't believe they can help at all and will only make things worse for our country in the years to come. Your accent is getting more and more drunk. He does episode. He does realize that when <laughs> George Washington stood up against the federal government, it was because they're taxing everything to make the, to make the whiskey, to make the beer, to make their elky hall. They don't want to pay taxes on that day anymore. Uh, the story continues and says Bundy may want to hit the books and learn a bit more about the about what Washington thought of armed insurrections after the U.S. became an independent nation. For example, Washington hailed the quashing of Shays' Rebellion and pointed to the insurrection as a reason to create a stronger federal government than the one established in the Articles of Confederation. Quote, if three years ago any person had told me at this day I should see such a formidable rebellion against the laws and constitutions of our own making as now appears, I should have thought him a bedlamite. <laughs> a fit subject for a madhouse, he said. <laughs> As president, Washington put down the the 1794 Whiskey Rebellion, leading a force of lar uh, a force of 13,000, <laughs> larger than any American army amassed in one place during the Revolution, to quell the uprising, declaring that the insurgents seek to shake the government to its foundation, and deriding the treasonable opposition for propagating principles of anarchy and refusing submission to law. So, so this guy George comparing Washington, himself to George Washington, if George Washington were around, he'd go, nuh uh. Oh, no, so you didn't. If George Washington <laughs> used 13,000 <laughs> yeah. men then, he would use half a million now? <laughs> yeah. Well, not only that, but I mean, even comparing numbers straight across, 13,000 to 150. Yeah. <laughs> well, not even 100, there's not even 150 people at the ranch or at, or the, at the refuge. refuge. At the bird That's refuge. That's what they claim. Yeah, the yeah, they, had yeah. a, they had 150 in the protest. Well, Very few showed up to the the refuge. Uh, yeah, said, Fuck Was this. Washington was able to to generate many, many, many times more. Uh, did we? Uh, what? What's? That's basically all I've got for tonight. What was your other uh, international? Mm. This one will be fun. Okay, it's a lot of words I really don't know in this one. 
I like big words. Multisyllabic <laughs> Not, stuff. No, no, no. Foreign oh. language stuff. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> when gunmen burst into her home, the freshly installed mayor of Tamixco, south of Mexico City, told them to leave her family alone and surrender to them. Hisalamota, who lived with her parents, is still in her pajamas on Saturday morning when the masked commando jumped a wall and stormed the house. The 33-year-old single woman's parents were home alone with the, her newborn nephew, whose grandmother was preparing to give him a bottle. The assailant beat up her relatives until Moda gave herself up, uh, gave herself up so they wouldn't, so that they would let the others go," said the mayor's mother, Juanita Ocampo. "I told them that if they wanted to kill me, they should kill me first," Ocampo told reporters. But she told them, "I am Hisela. They took her because she was very brave." But the trigger man pulled Mota from her bedroom, took her to the living room, and killed her in front of her parents. Her desperate father Jesus. ran after the killers. Mota's murder has become a tragic symbol of the threats mayors face across Mexico and the violence that has engulfed Morelos, where drug cartels fight turf wars while kidnapping and extorting citizens. Mota was killed just one day after taking the oath of office amid hopes among supporters that she would fulfill her promise to curb crime in the city of 100,000, known for resorts and water slides just two hours from Mexico City. But the left of center mayor became one of the victims of the gangland violence that has plagued the city as authorities blamed Los Rojas drug gang for her murder. I think you pronounced that right. Oh, Sounds good. Yeah. Newly elected mayor... Uh, newly elected mayor Hisela Mota speaks speaks during her installation ceremony in uh, Tamixco, Morelos State, Mexico, on January first. Her home stands out among the other houses in the humble humble neighborhood. It has a rustic wooden door and a brick oven on the patio. I guess that makes it upscale. I guess rustic upscale. Yeah, neighbors recalled. That on that eve of, on the eve of her mur murder, Mota had celebrated her new job with music and dancing. The next morning, six shots were heard. We thought it was firecrackers, but we heard them scream that they killed Hisela, said uh, Pablo Ortega, a 48-year-old neighbor who said seven armed men had arrived in a car. Shortly after the murder, the police killed two, two suspects in a shootout and arrested three others, including a 17-year-old boy and a 32-year-old woman. Uh, Morelos Governor uh, Grasso Ramirez said Los Rojas killed Mota as a warning to other mayors who back his controversial plan to place state and municipal police under a unified command. Uh, Ramirez praised his late Ramirez Ramirez his late colleague from the Democratic Revolution Party as independent and combative. Forensic personnel stand on the. January tw on the January second on standby <laughs> on January second outside the house of Hisela Mota murdered at her home by gunmen. That was probably an image that made it into the <clears throat> anyway. Yeah, uh, that made it into the anyway <laughs> news. Let's talk a little bit more about some of the drug gangs there. Did you guys watch Narcos? Uh, I started to. I need to get back to it. I like it very much. Is it about? Mexican murders? Colombian. No. Pablo Colombian Rambian. drug cartel, Pablo Escobar. Ah, I see. The big man. Uh, anyway, this was, I guess, pretty big pretty big news there. Well, Just well. a day after her election, or her, her swearing in as she the new mayor. Probably didn't pay off the cartels so. enough. No, she was sort of a re rebellious Against Bernie, the cartels. Bernie Sanders type yeah. police, and was murdered one day after... After being, uh, it's fucking signed. awful. And how? I mean, she's one more victim, one more casualty right. in the war on drugs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people also wonder why people from south of the border try to flee to America. I mean, the war on drugs right. really hasn't reduced drug use or consumption. No, no, it's just not made a lot of fucking people on the black market really, 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 really wealthy. Yeah. Yeah. And violent. Well, yeah. and and it's and it's also done an awful lot to put people away for non nonviolent crimes for a really 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 long time to flood our prison populations yeah yeah well it's 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 made people on the black market selling drugs very very wealthy criminals very very wealthy and people who run prison systems very yep. very wealthy yeah the private yeah. prisons yeah 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 and ruined 
millions of lives, tens of millions of lives in the process. Yep. But Reagan. Yeah. Well, we are. We are. Yeah, fuck Reagan. At the end of the the time we usually allot for our show. (laughs) (laughs) The time has come, my friends. I I just noticed last week I didn't didn't really pay attention to time. Yeah. It's like, holy shit, we went almost three hours. It didn't even feel like it. I cut a lot out of Did last you? week's show. A lot. <laughs> I cut a lot out. Yeah. It, still, I, I looked excited. I was listening to it yesterday, and I was like, holy shit, we did almost a three-hour show last week. I we yeah. didn't even think we went that long. Yeah. And that, like I said, I cut a lot out. Yeah. I probably cut a good 45 minutes out. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good, though. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm, yeah. I'm fairly proud of the editing job yeah. I've been doing on these. The- oh, yeah. It's fun. It's been amazing. I'm, I'm learning all kinds of fun things. Read at the board this week. Yeah, mm-hmm, we're recording mm-hmm. in stereo this week. See if it sounds different. We can and, we can we can show you real quick. And the studio looks awesome. So as I can well. talk and all of a sudden be in your left ear, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or I can be in your right ear, <laughs> or I can be right in the middle. <laughs> I always say in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I must I must have my headphones on backwards because you said left. You're like, no, it's my right ear. <laughs> <laughs> you do have them on backwards. Yeah, the R is for right. Well, yeah. I just usually put the cord on my right hand uh, side. Uh, makes sense. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in, everybody. As always, you can reach us at godlessrevolution at gmail.com. <laughs> Twitter our twatter at TGR Podcast. <laughs> Call and leave us a voicemail. Or send us a text message at 33081-REBEL. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash godlessrevolution. And we hope to hear from you soon. Uh, send us show notes, ideas, something we got wrong. We would love to be corrected on something if we were wrong about something because love we it. don't want to give people bad information. Yeah. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. No, we're, be scared. We're nice to people that that send stuff to us. We yeah. got an email mm-hmm. from a from a young person uh, very recently. She was four, Mister Sam. <laughs> <laughs> she was six. Her name was Aisha. <laughs> uh, oh God! <laughs> <laughs> no, Samuel said that he had listened to our latest podcast, uh, the first one that he's heard so far, and agree with us. Practically on everything about it. His favorite thing. Oh, he he, he had listened to the debate. Yeah, uh, must have been the Democratic debate because he says the favorite. His favorite thing about the debate was every time they said Hillary Clinton, it sounded like Hillary Clinton. Mm-hmm. Was well, it was a it was a GOP <laughs> debate he'd listened to. Oh, was it? Yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, thank you very much for the feedback, Sam. Uh, I sent Sam a reply. Um, and he sent us another reply back. My reply to him was just, you know, thanks for the message. I'm glad you like the show. Also, congratulations on escaping the clutches of your former church. I know that can be a daunting task. I'm guessing you are a Mormon. And then I told him that I sent my resignation letter in years ago and have organized and helped organize a few of the mass resignation events since then. Told him to have a happy and safe New Year's Eve, and he responded him back and said, yes, I'm a Mormon. I'm actually only 15, but my parents know. I'm guessing no, that he's an atheist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking of resigning when I'm 18 and don't need a parental signature. Yeah. Thanks for responding. Happy New Year. So. Okay. Thanks for the message, Sam. Hope everything turns out all right. If you have mm-hmm. any questions, if you need any tips on how to communicate with your parents, if they're giving you a hard time, it sounds like they're being pretty so, cool yeah, about it. Sounds yeah, it sounds like they they probably are pretty cool about it. But yeah. Which is good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah that's always really helpful. Oh, yeah. It's, it's well, it's really rough. Especially with parents in the LDS faith, who yeah, yeah. they're like, "Oh, you don't believe in our faith anymore? Well, well, go find somewhere else to live now." Yeah, they do that. They do that. Kick you out, ignore it, and forget it, kind of thing. I mean, I force you to go to church. I don't know that it's any worse than like Baptists or Muslims on the uh, on the a, scale a, of a, shittiness, oppres- toward, oppression yeah. scale. But yeah. you know, Mormons tend to just they're they're passive, yeah. sort of by nature or by training, and so they just kick you out and ignore you. Yeah. Done. Shit in the dust their hands of it, you know. Yeah, I'll just I'll just ignore this problem away. Yep. Out of sight, out of mind. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, again, thanks for tuning in everybody. We will catch you all next week. Bye. Following that, I think we have a couple debates we're going to have to figure it out. Figure out which one or you know, which ones do. we're going to cover, what we're going to do there. Uh still very excited. Go out I would encourage everybody to go get David Silverman's Fighting book, God. Fighting God. I was just going to do that plug. It's a fucking great book. It's really good. Uh, In fact, I am going to try to, 
I, I'm not, I'm undecided. You guys can help me. Okay. I will I, I I will only have time probably if 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 at all, but for one drawing that I'm hoping ah. um, I can either do Madeline Marie O'Hare, David Silverman, American Atheist, we could all sign it, give it to Dave. Yeah. Be awesome. Yeah. Or a draw Muhammad for Dave that we could all sign because mm. he had such a long section on that, which I was like inspired. I wrote that down in my notes. Mm, I'm like, Oh, I yeah. got to draw Muhammad for Dave. Yeah. Mm. What if you draw David drawing Muhammad <laughs> <laughs> and just Madeline Marie O'Hare shaking her head on top, <laughs> like, giving, her, giving him the thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs thumbs up, up. Yeah. You go. <laughs> we'll have to chat about that. Okay. Yeah. Or you guys could email, uh, let us know if, you think you have a, an idea for what you want? Matt's I mean, a no, super artist. Yeah, he's way. good. Yeah. Hold your for you guys. Oh. Okay. We will catch you all next week. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Tabby toes. Don't go having an arm revolutionary off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't <worry. Bye. laughs> Get jazzy on I'm that flight that you get on International First class seat on my lap, girl Riding comfortable Cause I know what that girl them need New York to Haiti I got lipstick stamps from my passport You make it hard to live Been around the world, don't speak the language But your booty don't need explaining All I really need to understand is When you You talk dirty to me Jazzy on it. You know the words in my songs. No habla English. Oh. Our conversations ain't long, but you know what is. I know what that girl them want. London to Taiwan. I got lipstick stamps on my passport. I think I need a new one. Been around the world, don't speak the language. But your booty don't need explaining. All I really need to understand is when you talk dirty to me. Because I did the don't rape anybody there a few weeks ago.